much, gotta stop and stand A lot of wants, I got a lot of fears But now my time is here, I know my time is here I'm singing Not alone, I know, I know You got a time to grow and go and do what you do Do what you do, do what you do Move on and move Do what you do, do what you do Move on the moon and show the future is you Do what you do, do what you do Move on the moon and show the future is I started it all below the bottom Now I didn't belong, I saw the calling Now all that I lost ain't gonna stop me Cause all of it taught me how to solve me Had a lot of cheers, had a lot of dance, gotta stop and stand. A lot of wants, I got a lot of fears, but no, my time is here. I know my time is here. I'm singing. This has been a crazy year. Market taking, making tears. Heart was sinking, hate the mirror. Made me wanna disappear. Made me wish I wasn't here. But I know I gotta dare. People watching me to chair. I'm reflecting out the dreams. Every question is a beam. So the blessings gave me wings to fly to you. I'm got about the feelings inside of you. I'm got about the things that inspire you. And we can see the future is possible. It's possible. Like, I know what I can do. Send a little love to the vibe of you. Send a little touch and we're shining through. Send a little word of your conquer to you. Do what you do, do what you do Move on the moon and show the future is you Do what you do, do what you do Move on the moon and show the future is A lot of years, had a lot of cheers Had a lot of days, gotta stop and stand A lot of wants, I got a lot of fears But now my time is here, I know my time is here I'm singing Working on the dream on my off days Money gotta talk with the cards say Life is a game that you gotta play And I've been taking shots from a far away spot I was in the hack but my heart ain't dry I'ma get it back in a few more stops Trying to make me feel I can do what I do I'll be doing me till the future is you I started it all below the bottom I didn't belong, I saw the calling The all that I lost ain't gonna stop Cause all of it taught me how to solve me Do what you do, do what you do Move to the moon until the future is you Do what you do, do what you do Move to the moon until the future is Tokenmetrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. Disclaimer. Tokenmetrics Media LLC does not provide individually tailored investment advice and does not take a subscriber's or anyone's personal circumstance into consideration when discussing investments nor is it registered as an investment advisor or broker-dealer in any jurisdiction. Information contained herein is not an offer or solicitation to buy, hold, or sell any security. The Tokenmetrics team has advised and invested in many blockchain companies. A complete list of their advisory roles and current holdings can be viewed here at tokenmetrics.com slash disclosures. All right, all right. Hello, everybody. How are you? Welcome, welcome to Tokenmetrics live stream. So today it's going to be just me. Bill is uh, dealing with, with some uh, stuff. As you guys know, stay safe, stay quarantined, and let's survive this. I mean, we've been through two years bear market, so what's one extra year? <laughs> anyway, thank you all for joining. This is being streamed everywhere to YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. So thank you all for joining. Appreciate you guys. Once again, uh, or actually first time, Menti code. Go to menti.com. This time we have the code in the top right corner so you guys can see the code throughout the entire live stream go to menti.com put in the code 704109 that's 704109 to submit your questions so you guys will have me for typically more than two hours long this time it's just me so looking forward to answer all your questions and yeah i mean it's it's rough but 
We'll get through it. We'll get through it. Okay, so let's do a quick shout outs. So shout out to a Biodin. What's up? I'm guessing you're from Nigeria. What's up, my brother? Um, then Pres Presian. How are you? Great to see you here. Royal Blue saying it's moon time. <laughs> we hope so. We hope so. Uh, I am rocking the, the moon shirt. Then let's see here. Hoping to learn a thing or two today. Yes, I mean, so the title of the show is Global Recession as 20% uh, Unemployment Possible. And I mean, I think, as I keep on saying in, in, in the past shows, we have to hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. So we have to hope for the best and be prepared for the worst. So what does that mean? That means, okay, the chat is not working. Let me go back to this. So that means exactly the way it sounds. Plan for the worst. P plan like it's an a apocalypse. Plan like this is the end of the world and act accordingly and hope that you're wrong. But if that does happen, then you're ready. Okay. Shout out to Masadi. What's up? Good to see you here. Kenneth, Kim, how are you? Um, doing great. Doing great. James, James in the house. Consistent. I like that. What's up, James? I'm doing great, uh, Ignatius. Great to see you here as well. All right, all right. So let me let me hop straight into the presentation here. All right. So global recession. Everybody's talking about this is a global recession. What should we do? So and in, in today's live stream, we're going to go through all the different events happening, current events, macro events, and see how that could affect all of us here in crypto and how that can affect everybody who who has money in crypto or just anybody who has money in, in the markets or even outside the markets. Because I've been watching some videos on some other people saying this is also going to affect real estate. So pretty much the entire world is on pause for the next few months, maybe even longer, who knows? So let's see how that affects all of us. As usual, this is not investment advice. This is being sponsored or brought to you by us, the Token Metrics team. So if you haven't yet already, go to tokenmetrics.com and start your 14 day free trial today. That's 14 free days to try out token metrics. Uh, that's across all the plans. Somebody asked me a few days ago whether they could try out each plan for 14 days. Unfortunately, that's not possible. Uh, otherwise, we would be out of business. <laughs> so 14 days across all the plans. And we do plan to make a drastic change. I actually haven't, haven't talked about this yet, but we do plan to combine well, well, not combined, but we do plan to remove the basic plan and going forward, it's not yet been done, but if anybody out there who's currently on the basic plan, everybody will be fine. But going forward, the idea is to have just three plans to keep things simple, meaning we'll have just the hodler plan, the investor plan, and the professional plan. That was something we talked amongst the team and the board of uh, directors, and we just thought it really made sense to really make things simple and just have three plans. What does that mean? That means only three plans. So the basic plan, which is 10 bucks a month uh, or 60 bucks a year, will not, not be there anymore. So if you are planning to get the basic plan, now is the time. Otherwise, it's going to be kaput, right? It's, it's, it's going to be owned by us, unfortunately. Okay, anyway, back, back to this. All right, so on the agenda, we've done shout outs, intros. Today's just me. If you don't know who I am, I'm Ian Bellina. Uh, the, founder and CEO of Token Metrics. I've been in the crypto space for over three years. Um, partner at 100X Advisors, which is a blockchain investment and advisory company. Prior to that, I was working in the analytics space. So I love data and analytics at IBM for four years. Last year, I was analytics executive covering open source analytics. So working with uh, helping sell IBM software to um, Macy's, Fortune 500 companies like Staples, getting them to love to use analytics products. So worked with Apache Spark, uh, Hadoop, all that, all that jazz. Uh, prior to that was three years as a technical sales engineer for IBM Watson Analytics. Um, prior to that, I was working as an IT consultant at Deloitte Consulting. And my background is, that, is as a computer engineer, bachelor's and master's. Anyway, okay, so uh, up next in the agenda, we do have lots of, token, lots of news for token metrics that I do want to kind of put out there. I've already kind of covered the, the change in the plan, but I have some other new news as well. Then we'll talk about the global recession and why this, this is something big and why this could be worse than 2008 and 
how all of us should really uh, act accordingly. Uh, and then crypto therapy, Bill's not here, but we'll do crypto therapy using token metrics. So going through Bitcoin, Ethereum, and altcoins and seeing where the trends are. Uh, I think you guys will find it very, very interesting. Then we'll, we'll share our top 10 cryptocurrencies for the week. This will be short term, short term perspective. And last, we'll do the AMA. So any questions you have, go to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com. Use the code 704109. That's 704109 to submit your questions. Uh, I, I'll probably lock the submission of new questions in about an hour or so. That way we have time to go through all, as many questions as we can. And if we're not able to answer your question here, stay tuned uh, for the token metrics news. We have a very big announcement. Something if you watch the if you're on the last live stream, then you probably know what it is. All right, so let me skip through this. You guys already heard the intro. So first up, the first big news. We've listened to feedback from lots of different professional affiliates. Uh, so a friend of mine invited me to a mastermind of affiliate marketers. And these guys are like making seven figures, some even eight figures in affiliate marketing. And I basically had them give me feedback. Uh, oh, I had these group of people give me feedback on our affiliate program. And he said, you know what? If you want to get this really to blow up, you have to incentivize people more upfront. So before we had 20% lifetime recurring commissions and we're getting people in the affiliate program, but we weren't really getting many people really pushing it much. So they said, you know what? As opposed to doing lifetime commissions, do it for one year, but give them twice as much. So we've listened to that. And in less than, less than one day when we launched it, we already have affiliates coming in and people getting commissions. So we have doubled the commission from 20% recurring uh, lifetime to 40% recurring commission for, the, for 12 months. So meaning that if you refer somebody to the professional plan, for example. Um, now, mind you, everybody you refer gets to 10% off just to kind of give them a deal. But anyway, you can earn over $800 per referral. So we had somebody who just referred some, uh, somebody in the professional plan referred their, their friend to the professional plan. And this person is, will be earning 800 something dollars in the next month or so. So I think this is a better deal. Plus, we also made changes to the sub affiliates. So before you, you would only earn 2% uh, commission on anybody you of any of your friends who end up referring somebody else. We've now 5x that to 10% sub affiliate commission. That's only for one tier, meaning that if you re refer somebody and they bring somebody else on board, you earn commission, but you can't have like multiple levels. Otherwise, it turns into a Ponzi scheme or MLM. And we're definitely trying to avoid that. But anyway, long story short, we've changed the commission from 20% to 40% commission. So if you haven't yet referred somebody to token metrics, now is the time. Now, this, this might not last. This is us just kind of experimenting. I mean, we know everybody is in tough times. So this could really be an extra avenue to earn some commission and income, right? Online income is big, especially in the affiliate marketing world. So if you're quarantined at home, looking for ways to make some extra money, Hey, go ahead and uh, we have lots of assets and content for you to share. Share token metrics with your affiliate link and maybe you can get paid. And if you're an influencer or somebody who has a large following on YouTube or a newsletter or anything like that, reach out to us, info at tokenmetrics.com. We would definitely like to work with you and see if there are ways for us to really have a win-win type partnership. Anyway, so that's really the, the big announcement for the affiliate program. Okay, next, we, ha we have also launched, so we have launched a new newsletter, and now it's public. So before you had to join our different email list by downloading an ebook or something like that, but now everything is public. So if you just go to, if I can bring it up here, tokenmetrics.com slash substack, we'll be putting out content. The time frame will vary from anywhere from every one or two weeks. So this is the most recent newsletter. Uh, if you're already on our past newsletters, then you're fine. We're able to import everything into Substack. So going forward, we'll be putting out all our content via Substack so everybody can view, view everything publicly. So this is the most recent uh, newsletter. 
we have over 15,000 people on the newsletter, so it's great. It's a great way to really kind of stay up to date. And it's also a great way to have everything sent to you in a concise manner. So we go through uh, different things happening with token metrics, with the market. We post the videos. We also go through and send you a summary of the, the different AMA questions we have every single week. We had the 100X show videos published. So for example, Wolf of Polonian X, uh, the homie. This is probably one of the best interviews we've done. We, we, we go all across the spectrum from him being in jail to him being homeless to becoming a six figure and even during the bull market seven figure crypto trader. We also, we also recently had Alex, the CEO of Celsius on. So just just great stuff. Some news roundup as well. So definitely make sure you subscribe to that if you haven't yet already. Go to tokenmetrics.com slash substack. All right. Then the next big news, the big announcement. I know this is something we talked about last week. I asked everybody, hey, do you guys want to have a token metrics community forum? And guess what? We're now open for business. Uh, this is a free community. Now, let me just pull it up here. I think this is something that really was needed. So let me just pull this up here and share this with everybody. So now you can go to forum.tokenmetrics.com and join. Now, please bear with us. This has not been stress tested. This is running on our own server. Uh, the backend is, is Discourse, which is a great platform. So we do have some, some topics already that we've added, or rather categories. So we have investing for project reviews, trading and technical analysis and TA, and technology and code reviews. Then we have some uh, for random stuff. It's a lineous. So with that being said, if you guys want to gather and discuss amongst the entire community, whether you're watching this from YouTube or Twitter, Periscope, the podcast, Facebook, all of us can now come together and, and just talk on the forum. Now, I find this to be a lot better than Telegram because Telegram is great. I mean, don't get me wrong, but it's really hard to index and search because We've had a Telegram group for over three years, and there's been lots and lots of gems in there, but it's hard to just go in there and just search because everything is just one, one chat. So now that we can categorize and index everything and anybody out there can just search on the forum or just even on Google. So I think this is something that's going to be great for the community to bring everybody out there, whether you're a trader, an investor, developer, entrepreneur, it doesn't matter. If you're in the crypto space and you want, you want to talk with a global audience that varies across the entire world, I definitely recommend you go out and sign up right now. Okay, all right, let me just see how we're doing here in the comments. Hey Barry, what's up, what's up? Yes, yeah, smash the likes to subscribe if you haven't already. Token Metrics Forum. Okay, what's up Reggie? Okay, now let's go on to the next topic. Okay. All right. So token metrics win of the week. This is a segment I want to add here because people have been asking, Hey, how can I use token metrics? What's, what's it doing? Well, so I want to talk about it, the good calls token metrics had, obviously this is just our research, our tool, our platform, everybody will use it differently, but going through the different ratings in the past week or so Bitcoin and make it down performed fairly well actually very, very well. So let me just pull this up here. We talked about this recently in the newsletter. So let me go up here. So the main thing that happened with token metrics, if I can zoom in here. So during the coronavirus induced chaos, uh, in the past week or so, the short term trading models were just going through the charts for Bitcoin, suggesting that BTC was very, very undervalued and a bounce was in order. Then Bitcoin ended up bouncing from under 4K and went over 6K. So, I mean, congratulations to anybody that played that because that was definitely a chaotic time and time when most people were selling, most people were getting out. And as you guys know from our past shows, that's the best time to really buy the dip. Now, whether or not that's going to be a long-term dip, who knows? But short-term, right? The short-term models called it and we think that was great. Then the second thing 
was Maker Dow. So Maker Dow was one of the highest rated cryptocurrencies on on our model last week, and it went, it fell down from, I think oh, 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 three hundred bucks or so. Went all the way down to two hundred, then bounced back to over four hundred. So you had a chance to buy Maker Dow under two hundred bucks short term as a as a short short term trade before it bounced back to over three hundred bucks. So I mean that was. I mean, in times like this, when the entire market is red and people are wondering whether crypto is dead, whether it's a safe haven asset, any short-term trade wins like this, are, I mean, this is where you, you make money, right? You make money and you also don't lose as much money. It's because for those who don't know, MakerDAO had issues where they lost $4 million. And uh, based on the price crash of Ether, and people were questioning DAO. So our motto said, hey, you know what? This is very, very undervalued. And congrats to anybody who made money on that. So those were the tokenmetrics wins of the week. And hopefully we have a lot more in the future. Okay, now let's go to the next topics I want to cover here. Okay, let me just see if I, I want to hide this. Don't need this here. All right, so the global recession. What exactly is going on here? So first thing first, Goldman Sachs predicts the U.S. GDP is going to shrink by 5% in the next quarter. So, I mean, obviously Goldman Sachs is very credible. And when you start hearing numbers like this, it makes, it makes you want to panic. I mean, so what exactly do we do? And then going across the ocean to China, 5 million people in China lost their jobs in the first two months. 5 million people. And we know China has some questionable uh, transparency issues. So if they're being, let's say 5 million, it might be even more than 5 million. And then analysts predict that the U.S. jobless or unemployment claims could exceed over 2 million. Over 2 million people will be unemployed, our expectations. And then, this, is, this should actually be COVID-19, not sure it says COVID-10. <laughs> but COVID-19 could cause 20% unemployment rate if the government doesn't do any action. So let me kind of delve deeper into these topics and then we'll take some questions from the audience as well and see what you guys think about this. But I mean, if, if, you ha if, you, if you've been living under a rock, uh, maybe you missed the memo, but a global recession is coming. So, right, so here's an article from Bloomberg. They talk about US GDP is going to shrink 5% in the second quarter. They go on to say, the world's largest economy will shrink 5% in the second quarter after zero gross domestic product growth in the first three months of the year. So GDP has not grown in the first three months of the year. And they're saying the economy is going to shrink by 5%. Consumers and businesses will continue to cut travel, entertainment, and restaurant spending, while supply chain disruptions and tightening in financial conditions will further decent growth, uh, will further dent growth. And now let's go to this other article here from CNBC. So China is... Basically, has 5 million people in China will have no jobs in the first two months. So China is official, but highly doubted urban unemployment rate jumped in Feb to 6.2%. It's highest on record. So whether it's China or America, these are the big players in the world, in the global markets, and things are not looking so good. Uh, this is kind of off topic as well, but even a crypto fund, uh, one belly up, adaptive capital. They use too much leverage. So all these aren't really good times right now. Then if we go to Bloomberg, so Mnuchin warns that virus could yield 20% jobless rate without action. And he goes on to say, so they're proposing a stimulus package of $1 trillion into the economy. So basically quantitative easing, printing a lot more, and the main thing to note when it comes to printing and quantitative easing, uh, print, printing more fiat currency, is that it may seem good short term, but long term, it's, it's horrible. It's horrible because the, purchase, the purchasing power of the American economy or the American people, and also in other countries as well, the purchasing power gets worse, right? So buying a loaf of bread, buying groceries, your everyday items will re require more money. 
So while printing money seems like the it, like a solution, it's actually the problem. Now, obviously, and that's not really my expertise, but uh, one other person maybe you guys could check out, even though he gets trolled in the crypto space, is Peter Schiff. <laughs> uh, he has really some great analysis when it comes to understanding the American uh, economy. All right, and uh, then he goes on to say that he told the senators that he believes the economic fallout from the coronavirus is potentially worse than the 2008 financial crisis. So 2008 is going to look like a walk in the park compared to this. Uh, then we go on to say here, Goldman Sachs says over 2 million unemployment jobs. And Bank of America says it could be even 3 million. So this is the chart that really kind of sums it up, right? So here we have the initial jobless claims. And Goldman Sachs predicts that we're going to go from here. This is almost close to zero to two and a half million people due to the coronavirus. Now, the coronavirus didn't really cause the issue, but this was a bubble that was, this was a debt bubble and credit bubble that was going to explode. And the coronavirus was the pin that popped the bubble. It could have been any pin out there, but if we look at regular, if we go back in history and look at everything that's happened in the markets, every crash, there was something that, there were events that popped the bubble. So if we go back to, for example, with the dot-com bubble, some people say 9-11 is what popped the bubble. It didn't cause the recession, but it was what popped it. Then if we go to 2008, people say it was Lehman Brothers, Bear Stearns going bankrupt, going belly up. That popped the bubble. And then you had everything with mortgages and everything. Just, and the whole economy just kind of went kaput. Now, looking at the market now in 2020, it's obvious that the coronavirus is what's popping the bubble. Now, if we go back to even last year, when the yield curve inverted, people were expecting a recession. Uh, for those who follow me on Instagram, you guys know I've, I've been <laughs> predicting the recession for a while. Not that I want to, but just kind of based on what all the other, on what the data tells us. And it's definitely concerning. So I, I know if you're out there, if, if you work an hourly job, I mean, times are tough. Times are, are going to be tough. So as we like to say, hope for the best, but plan for the worst. I mean, me personally, I've been going through looking at all my different business card statements and trimming down, pruning, and asking myself, do I really need this? Can I get this for free elsewhere? So I'm, I'm living like... Like I'm a broke college student. So, and I think that's something other people can also do as well because we're not sure how long this could last. Because what if there is, because on average, a recession lasts longer than 12 months, 12 to 13 months or so. So what, what will you do if 20% of the country or the world is unemployed? How will you pay your bills? So all these are questions that I know Everyone is asking, I mean, myself included. And so even with, the, with, with our team, we're just really trying to see how we can really stay frugal and nimble and not grow too fast. Uh, so apologies if there have been any delays with just customer service or just other things, because, I mean, this is a global crisis and all of us are dealing with it. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of the, the rundown in terms of what's happening. In terms of how to really respond, there, there's several ways to kind of think about this. So as an investor, I mean, a recession is really the best time to invest. Assuming you have capital on hand to deploy, now is the best time to invest. Doesn't mean go out there and buy the dip right now and spend everything, but I think a strategy would be dollar cost averaging. Obviously not financial advice, just my, my opinion, but dollar cost averaging over the course of this recession because that's when really you get the best deals, the best bargains. I'm not going to go too much into it because we covered this, I think, two weeks ago on the last live stream. But that's really the best strategy because I have lots of people, even people not, not, not in crypto, DMing me, sending me emails saying, Ian, hey, what's the plan? Like, is now a good time to invest? I mean, all I can say is it's going to get worse before it gets better. So, and don't try to time the bottom because nobody gets that right. By the time the bottom is in, it's already bouncing back up. So what you want to do is just 
dollar cost average across a, a long period of time, knowing that we could be in a recession for the next 12 to 18 months even. So having that perspective, you have to really be a long-term investor. If you're in this for a quick flip, then you have to have a different strategy. But if you're looking to really buy the dip, then this could really be the time to do it. Now, let me talk about Bitcoin and crypto because everybody's saying is Bitcoin and crypto tied to, to, the, the, to fiat currencies? Is it tied to the capital markets? I think right now, it's kind of showed the entire world that yes, it is tied to capital markets. And honestly, based on, on token metrics and based on our analysis, right now, might not really be the best time. Right now, it's kind of been neutral. Right now, the models are neutral and bearish. So with that being said, I think you really have to be very, very cautious with dipping your toes in at this point in time. You have to kind of know what you're doing. And I'll cover this during the, the overview of the top 10 cryptos of the week. But I mean, stay safe, uh, stay frugal, and plan for the worst. Okay, all right. That was my, that, that was my spiel. Let me just take some questions. Let me just see how we're doing here with questions. How do I? Okay, once again, go to menti.com, M E N T I.com, code 704109. <laughs> yeah, COVID 10 is wrong. Okay, Tyrone says, Ian, CNN reported that 2.2 million Americans applied for unemployment this week. Yeah, I mean, that's crazy. That's crazy. Okay, let's see here. Did you ever find out who hacked your crypto account when it closed? Yeah, I'm so, I mean, I, I can't say much because, but all I can say, guys, stay tuned. We'll have a, a big announcement. Uh, but yes, I mean, we have, we have found the people. Let's, 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 why not? We have found the people. Now, that's all I can say for now. All right? Okay, let me just see a few other questions here. What qualifies you to give financial advice or recession advice? Uh, good question. Good question. Well, I mean, here in America, uh, every person is entitled to an opinion. <laughs> it's called freedom of speech. So that's the first reason. Uh, second reason is I've been in the crypto space for over three years as an investor, professional investor, full-time in crypto. So the fact that I can survive full-time in crypto from from investing and also building crypto businesses, I think I have some some knowledge in the space. Uh, I've also taken my Series sixty five investment advisor exam, and I'm in the process of becoming a registered investment advisor. So uh, it it is a a long process to apply, but the idea is hopefully by this year, me and Token Metrics will be official investment advisors. So stay tuned on that. But uh, I mean, hey, that, that was a fair question. Fair question. Doing everything live. Barry says, can't wait for the token metrics community forum. That's good. That's good. Okay. All right. So let me pivot. All right. So time for crypto therapy. So we're going to look into Bitcoin, ETH, and altcoins. So this is something I know people are asking for. So... Let me just pull it up. All this is going to be based on what Tokenmetric says. All right, so this might as well lead into the top 10 cryptocurrencies for the week. So as we see here on Tokenmetrics, this is short term. Short term scores typically are, are, are high. But right now, Tokenmetrics is not so bullish on, on the crypto space. Uh, Bitcoin, the TA is neutral. And scores, Bitcoin score has been as high as 99%. So when it was under four thousand dollars, it was ninety nine percent. And okay, so top ten cryptocurrencies this week for short term trades, meaning that less than thirty days, we have Bitcoin eighty two point one percent, Monero eighty point six percent, Cosmos seventy eight point six percent, Ethereum seventy eight point five percent, Decred seventy eight point three percent, Zcash seventy seven point six percent. 
um, Maker, 77.3%. Waves, 75.7%. That, basic attention token, 75.5%. And Algorand, 75.1%. So let's hop into Bitcoin here. Because I know what people, uh, I know lots of people have questions around Bitcoin. So for Bitcoin, let's go to the TA. So TA is very bearish on Bitcoin at the moment. So looking at all, all these different indicators, I mean, from a long-term perspective, the 200 EMA is still bullish. So this isn't really a long-term trend change, but short-term, it's not looking so good. Short-term, it's not looking so good. Now, if we go to the, the price predictions, now, I think... You should definitely take the price predictions with a grain of salt because the coronavirus is a black swan event. So nobody, I mean, not even the AI is going to be able to factor that in. But I mean, we will try to the best of our ability. So if we go to looking at the 30 months model here. So the, the purple dotted line is a predicted price and the red line is the actual price. So before the models were slightly behind or actually lower in prediction of the price because, sorry, the actual price was slightly, yeah, the models were slightly more, sorry, than the actual price because before we had about 10,000. We're thinking Bitcoin was going to 10,000. Then it began to just kind of stay flat for a bit. The models self-corrected. Then, this is where really Corona and the national lockdown started happening. So right now, it is uh, kind of tough to, to get a gauge on Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, if we go out here to, the, to this, it's not looking so good. Uh, but hopefully, this, this is the part where we hope the models are wrong. <laughs> because the models are basically just seeing a decline for the, for the next 30 days. It's basically thinking it thinks Bitcoin could go all the way to two thousand dollars. So this is the part where I hope the models are wrong, but hey, I mean, maybe it's seeing something we're not. But once again, take all this with a grain of salt because black swan events are unpredictable by nature, or by yeah, by nature and by definition. So take this with a grain of salt. I, I would, I would trust the TA a lot more. And the TA is bearish. So until this changes to bullish, right now we are bearish on Bitcoin. So even though Bitcoin is number one, right? It's the best currency to trade at the moment. We're still bearish on that. So actually, uh, let me just refresh here. Not sure why it's showing bearish and neutral in here. Okay, maybe there, there's some kind of glitch. I have to check into that. But yeah, I mean, right now, they, basically, things are not looking good at the moment. Just to kind of call a spade a spade. Now, if we go to Ethereum. So, going to Ethereum. Ethereum is neutral. So, meaning that not bullish, not bearish at the moment. Yeah, Ethereum has dropped all the way from 250 all the way down to to almost a hundred bucks. And now it's kind of been stagnant. If we go to the price predictions on Ethereum, um, it's, it's looking kind of the same. Okay, not quite as bad as Bitcoin. So here we, we had some issues with the database, uh, but okay, so going from here, the actual price was higher than the predictions. Then Ethereum here dropped. So right now the models are looking at Ethereum basically being flat. Now, if we go to the models down here, day by day. So the range we have for Ethereum is between $99 and 194. But the prediction, yeah, so pretty much it thinks it's going to kind of be going through this, this range. Now, let me... Let's go back to Bitcoin. Let's go back to Bitcoin because I, I didn't show the the range for that. Uh, 
So if we go down to BTC. Okay, yeah, something something is definitely wrong here. I'm gonna have to look into this. The range should not go below negative. <laughs> so I have to look into it. Maybe it's just the, the way it's being displayed. But it's not looking so good for BTC at the moment, unfortunately. But uh, I'm also surprised that the prediction models have Ethereum doing better than BTC. But I mean, that's kind of what the models say. Let me know what you guys think. Do you guys are you guys bullish or bearish on Bitcoin or Ethereum at the moment? Okay, let me take a look at the, the comments. Okay. Um, do you think Dragon Chain is underrated? Uh, no. Uh, if anything, it's overrated. Dragon Chain hasn't really done anything since since January 2018. Since it did a like an ADX. This, once they launched their first ICO, and 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 that was a dud. It hasn't really done much since then. It hasn't done much since then. All right, so what do you think about Link and Engine? Okay, let me see if we can quickly cover that. Okay, uh, just, just bear with me here. Okay, so Link... Link right now, token metrics rank is 20th. All this is short-term, short-term trading. So on these live streams, I'll, I'll typically just cover short-term trading because long-term, if you want long-term, maybe just uh, join the trial and just kind of see that the long-term picks. But short-term, meaning in the next 30 days or so, I mean, it's, it's not the worst, uh, but they are, in our opinion, better cryptocurrencies to trade. And we think right now, based on this market cap and rank, yeah, they're definitely, it's definitely overvalued at the moment. Uh, engine, I don't think we have that. Okay, I guess we do have that in the system. So Engine, right now, we are bearish from a TA perspective as well. Okay, let's get some, some other questions. Okay. Dari says BTC has never been through a recession before. Yes, I mean, definitely very, very bearish. So stay safe out there, right? Practice good risk management. Don't, uh, don't, don't risk a lot more than you're willing to lose. What happened to 1101? It was one of the most anticipated ICOs 2019. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say it was one of the most anticipated ICOs of 2019. I mean, if anything, they were really very low key. I mean, disclosure, I, I was an investor and advisor in 1101. But I mean, right now, timing hasn't been good. Uh, India did recently uh, open up or uh, unbanned crypto trading, which is good. But I mean, the market is has not been faring too well, right? But um, that's, that's really it. Okay, so what about Icon, ICX? Okay, let's look into ICX here. ICX. So the TA is, is bullish on ICX. Uh, the rank is, is not so good. So let's, let's, let's see what's going on here. Okay, yeah, I think we're having issues with updating the the grades just give me one second let me let me just do a deep a fresh pull because it seems we're getting conflicting data that does happen sometimes so, okay so let me let me just recalculate the, the technical analysis and let me refresh the grades Okay, all right, so that might take a, a minute. 
Okay, actually, maybe it, it, it solved already. Okay, so yeah, icon is, is neutral at the moment. Um, I think in general, maybe, maybe this, this will just be easier. I mean, anything outside, I mean, anything that's really not bullish, I would not even trade at the moment. Right now, because if Bitcoin is this low, things are not looking so good. So unless you're maybe looking to short, so let's say you wanted to short something. Let's find what's what's bearish. Let's say you want you, yeah. Let's find bearish and very bearish. And let's find something with volume. So let's say with volume greater than one hundred million. All right, so <laughs> Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV, EOS, XRP. I mean, basically, I mean, a, a lot of cryptocurrencies. And let's, let's sort them by market cap. So all these are possible shorts. So let's, let's add something. Let's say less than... less than 50. Okay, most of these were still scoring. So actually, let me, yeah, let me change that. Let's say greater than 25. All right, so, okay, just give me one second here. Maybe we can sort by volume. Okay, I mean, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV, EOS, XRP, Tron, Dash, Qtim, BitTorrent, VeChain, all these are possible shorts. Now, out of these, though, which one ha would be the ideal? Decentraland? No. RSK, RIF, 49%. And Bearish? Yeah, I mean, if you're looking for short-term trade, I mean, I think, if anything, shorting might be a better thing to do. But, I mean, as we all know, with shorting, it's, it's risky, right? Because anything could happen, especially in this kind of market. But definitely stay safe out there. If anything, I think it's probably best to hedge. So maybe if you're bullish on one thing, also have a hedge that is short one thing. So kind of have a long and a short on a particular, on different currencies. So looking at the at token metrics, so for example, maybe we're lo we're long. Actually, which one dropped the lead the most? So ultra, actually ultra. I don't think you you can short that. IOST, Digibyte. Okay, maybe Digibyte is down eleven percent. Very bearish on it. So maybe you could short Digibyte or something. Obviously not just our opinion, not not any kind of advice. While so let's say while you're shorting Digibyte, if that's even sh available on a, any leverage exchanges to short. Okay, why isn't this letting me? I guess I got to reset here. So let's say you have that going, then you we only search for cryptocurrencies that are in a TA trend that's bullish or very bullish. So maybe, yeah, so basically short Digibyte, long Monero. That could be one, one hedge. Or maybe long Decred. And, and maybe have some DAI. <laughs> so, so, so DAI is, is very bullish on DAI at the moment. All right, so let me know what you guys think. What, trade, what, what trades are you all doing at the moment? Let me... Check the, the comments here. Nobody ain't gonna buy crypto in a, in a depression. You know what, uh, Le Leonard Gonzalez, I, I, I probably agree with you. You know, I mean, times are tough. So definitely think everybody should be cautious, right? But I mean, actually, you know what? 
I agree with you that nobody's going to buy in a depression, but looking at it from a academic perspective, that's when you should be buying. If you, if you want to be Warren Buffett and be a value investor, meaning you're investing for a time frame of three years and longer, a long-term investor, and you're investing longer than three-year time frame, that's actually the time you want to buy. Right? Because that's when you get the best deals. Like imagine if you bought real estate during the last recession. You made bank, right? Same thing. Like if anything, looking at regular capital markets, companies that are getting decimated, cruise lines, uh, Boeing, uh, airliners, hotel companies, all these are getting wrecked. I mean, these are probably the companies that will be bailed out if there is a bailout coming. So, I mean, these companies right now are very, very undervalued because by definition, when it, buying something undervalued, it's almost like you're, you're timing it. And the best way to time something and buy it undervalued is to buy it when somebody is a forced seller, right? So I definitely recommend you check out books like The Most Important Thing and Mastering the Psycho by Howard Marks, who's a legend, legendary investor. And he basically says that you want to buy something when somebody is being forced to sell. Like maybe he's, he's being liquidated, he has a margin call, or he has to just get out of the, of the market because that person will give you whatever price you ask for. So that's how you end up buying Bitcoin below 4,000 before it bounces up to 6,000. Now, on a long-term perspective, you have to ask yourself, what is the intrinsic value of whatever you're buying? If it's Bitcoin or crypto, what, you have to really believe in it. You have to do your research, your due diligence. So if you believe in it long-term, then you, you aren't going to really care about well, actually you do care about the price but you're going to want to get it at a low price because that's how you protect your investment obviously no invest no, no returns are guaranteed in investing but if something is valued if bitcoin is fundamentally valued at let's say six thousand dollars and you're able to buy it for three thousand dollars and you think it's going to one hundred thousand or a million dollars why wouldn't you buy at 3000 right? Because if you don't buy then, you, you're basically telling yourself you're just a speculator. You're not in this for the long haul. Now, maybe you have other reasons, right? Maybe you don't want to buy the dip because you think it's a falling knife or what have you. But the thing is, nobody can predict the bottom. By the time somebody predicts it, or by the time it happens, it's too late to buy the bottom and you're buying at a higher price by definition. So, I mean, it's tough, it's tough. I know in the past we did talk about uh, active portfolio management, but that's something I think better reserved for professionals, people who are actively following the markets, right? To be, to actively manage the portfolio, you have to actively be following the markets. If you're a passive investor, I mean, a better strategy is really just balancing your portfolio over a period of time, whether it's monthly, quarterly, and taking profits on your winners and buying the dip on your losers. So, I mean, modern portfolio theory uh, is definitely something I definitely recommend you look into. But just balancing your portfolio, whether it's every quarter or every month, maybe even every week, a strategy like that, if, if you're doing that, you're fine. Like, in, in, my, in my opinion, you're fine because... Everything you're doing with that is doing the right things. Great video. Thank you, Ian, my brother. Uh, we, we miss you in South Africa. Oh, man, I miss South Africa, too. Uh, I, I love... I, I miss the Crypto World Tour. It was, a, it was a pleasure meeting everybody out there. In, uh, Cape Town, one of the most beautiful, beautiful places we've been to. Uh, I mean, because me, Ugo, and Diego are telling ourselves, next bull run... We're going to buy a vacation house in, in Cape Town, South Africa. That's how beautiful it was. I mean, the coast, had a chance to go see the penguins. I mean, it was, it was just epic, epic. All right. Okay, let's see here. Let us go to, yeah, I think we already covered that. Let's go, let's go to the AMA. Let's go straight into the AMA. Let's see here. 
Let me see here. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to close the the voting so we can get straight to asking the to answering the questions. And then let me just do a quick filtration to make sure we have no trolls here. Okay. All right, I think now we're good. Now we're good. All right, so first question from the audience. How similar is this to the Great Depression crash? Is an 80% crash in stocks on the cards? Um, good good question. I think, if anything, this, this is going to be a lot worse than what happened in 2008 because now we have a lot more debt than before because in 2008 we could just print and the sentiment this time around has changed because everybody everybody now knows about quantitative easing and whenever the government whenever the american government issues more more currencies or or prints more money the sentiment gets even more negative and bearish because they know this is not going to work that's why I mean, even uh, St the Treasury, the U.S. Secretary of Treasury, Stephen Munchen. Let me just share this here. So, in a recent article on Bloomberg, he's talking about twenty percent unemployment, and he says he told the senators that he believes the economic fallout from the coronavirus is potentially worse than the two thousand and eight financial crisis. So, I mean, imagine what happened before. And now we have a lot more debt, a lot more borrowing. So the balloon is a lot bigger. Like the balloon for 2008 was like this. We have like 10x. 10x is big. So I mean, keeping things simple, in my opinion, I think it's going to be a lot worse than before. And because really the world is over leveraged. So I think that's probably the best way of saying it. The world is over leveraged. People. Countries have borrowed way too much. So when you're over leveraged, I mean, losing money is inevitable, right? It's when a black swan event comes in and just kind of like the, the, the fund recently that went belly up, the crypto fund, right? That's kind of what's going to happen to lots of currencies. Now, I mean, I know lots of people out there have conspiracy theories, but uh, I mean, I'm not really a big believer in those. But all I can say is that, in my opinion, I think it's going to be a lot worse. So, because now it's not just a recession in America, it's going to be a global recession because the entire world is being affected now. But yes, America is the most affected, in my opinion, because they're one of the, they have a lot of debt versus other countries because we've just been printing money and printing money and printing money and thinking that's going to solve all our problems. Now, whether or not Bitcoin and crypto will save that, right now, that remains to be seen. Uh, I, I do think Bitcoin is a good hedge versus currency risk and, and inflation. But until inflation happens, Bitcoin is still going to be correlated with the markets. So I think it's going to take some time before it decouples. So, I mean, I think it's going to be worse than 2008 because we're going to experience what's known as stagflation. So that's when we experience, a, we, 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 we experience inflation and a recession. So meaning that because, because the purchasing power for Americans is going down because of quantitative easing and more money being printed while we're in a recession. So it's like a double whammy. So, I mean, I'm obviously, this, this, is, this is not really, my expertise. I mean, I'm definitely no economist, but uh, I think if you look at the numbers from 2008, I don't think I don't think we had stagflation in 2008. I don't think we had a maybe we did, but I don't think it was this bad, right? So the fact that we're going to experience stagflation 
rising inflation because as more money is being printed, it becomes more worthless. So having to, like your rent prices will go up as people, like imagine rent prices going up. Imagine every, imagine the cost of everything going up, whether it's 1x, 2x, obviously not, probably not that much, but imagine the cost of everything goes up 5%, 10%. While you have 20% unemployment, that's not a good combination. I mean, you don't have to be an economist to know that. That's, that's, that's wreckage right there. So I think just looking at that perspective. Um, now, one book, some books I do have on my to-read list. Let me see if I can pull them up here. Uh, just give me one second. So Peter Schiff's books. Uh, I know he gets trolled by the crypto community. But I mean, from a, from an economic perspective, he has some great analysis. So here's the book that's on my reading list. I've not read this book, but I do plan to read this. Let me see if I can pull it up here. So this is the book, right? So America's Coming Bankruptcy, The Real Crash, How to Save Yourself and Your Country by P Peter Schiff. Um, then I also recommend you check out a channel from George Gamon. Uh, he's definitely been talking about it as well. He he actually has better analysis than anybody I've seen on the on online when it comes to breaking down the repo markets, uh, quantitative easing, bailouts, and what's possibly going to happen. So I definitely recommend you you check out those those books and his channel. Uh, he's called G George Gamon. Let me see if I can find that here. Okay, yeah, so here's, actually, he does have a website as well. Let me see here. So this is his channel. R recommend you, you check it out. Tell him Ian Blaine sent you. So he also does q live stream Q&As. Q um, so he talks about all that stuff, right? So I would definitely recommend you check out his work uh, if, if you want to kind of delve deeper in, into those uh, topics. Okay, all right, next question. Okay, what happened to 1101? Total breakup, twice changing company, and they did not inform the community, your opinion? I mean, um, obviously, I, I am a, an investor and an advisor to the company, but I mean, right now, I, I would definitely, uh, I mean, things are tough, right? <laughs> and that's really it. Things are tough, times are tough. Uh, it is trading on exchanges, but uh, volume is not quite there. So, I mean, I, I definitely cannot really tell anybody to go out there and buy or invest, right? Obviously, um, even though I'm, I'm, I'm an investor, they're, the, they're, they're going through a reorg, right? So I think for anybody out there who's been following the project, definitely just just kind of wait, be patient. but I would not go out there and rush to, to invest. Okay, next question. When are you canceling basic plan? Um, I would say probably within the next month or so is the time frame. So sometime in April, give or take. Yeah, I would say sometime in April is when we plan to cancel the basic plan. Just to kind of, because we've, we've done... Uh, some analysis and looking at the and just the eighty twenty perspective, and we would say one percent of our revenue and sales come from the basic plan. So yes, uh, we we do just kind of listening to the community. We think it will be better if we just kind of focused on giving value to the people in the in the other plans. And I think also the way it's structured, it might not not, not have been the the best option because. People in the basic plan only get access to the to Bitcoin, and they get ratings on the top twenty, but not detailed reports. So we think bringing everything into just three plans would be a lot more cost effective and better for our customers. Hi Ian, I like your videos. My question is: How will the global recession affect Bitcoin or crypto market in general? Okay, so how will 
the global recession affect Bitcoin and crypto? I've kind of answered this question, but let me see if I can answer it again in, in a different way. So you have to understand the value prop of Bitcoin. Uh, I think what we can really say is the main value prop for Bitcoin, I looking at this from my perspective, is for currency risk and for political risk. It's a hedge versus those two. What is currency risk? Currency risk is basically inflation. So what happened in, in Venezuela, in Argentina? That's why Bitcoin is so popular in Argentina. I went to Buenos Aires, Argentina, uh, two years ago on a crypto world tour. I mean, probably they love Bitcoin the most out of anywhere I've been in the world. And it's because people were getting paid in Bitcoin because the Argentine peso was getting devalued. The, inflation, the hyper, hyperinflation was ridiculous. So hyperinflation is when you have rapid growth in inflation and a currency becomes almost worthless. So in places like that, Bitcoin was a way to protect and save their wealth. So Bitcoin has already fundamentally proven in several different countries around, around the world that it's a hedge against hyperinflation. Then the second thing is political risk. So kind of the same thing, kind of different. It's more from when a government or a president wants to do something, right? So look, for instance, early in the year when there was tension in, in the Middle East with Iran and the U.S., lots of people went to Bitcoin. And the price of Bitcoin actually went up because for if events or things happen outside of, outside of your control in, in your country, for example, in China, uh, lots of Chinese nationals were fleeing to Bitcoin because they wanted to escape whether it was taxes or having their money seized. So, for instance, what happened with Cyprus, where people had money in their bank accounts seized by the government. Imagine having your wealth in your bank account. The government goes in there, takes half your money and says, this, this is forced taxation. So Bitcoin is a hedge against things like that. It lets you become your own bank. So I think fundamentally, those are the two hedges for Bitcoin. So now looking at the global recession, Bitcoin and crypto has been correlated because everything has been going down because people have been looking for liquidity. People have been looking for cash. So nobody cares what the asset is. They're just looking to cash out and get money. So that's why everything has been going down. But I think once that stabilizes, which has somewhat happened, but I don't think we're, we're quite there yet. I think once things stabilize, and then we, uh, so I think once we go into the global recession and you have governments and countries trying to take people's money, confiscate it with political risk, that's when Bitcoin and crypto in general, but mainly Bitcoin will start to do well. And I think once we start to see inflation and hyperinflation as a result of governments printing money with, through quantitative easing, then Bitcoin will be a, a, a hedge. So if anything, I think we have to wait until the recession fully hits and things kind of unfortunately get worse. And then all of that, will really, Bitcoin will really start to shine. And I think that's when Bitcoin can grow. And when Bitcoin grows, I think the rising boat will, will lift all tides and other cryptocurrencies like Ethereum and DAI and DeFi will also start to grow as well. So I think overall, that's kind of what I think is going to happen. That's just my opinion. Uh, I could be wrong. Who knows? I'm definitely not an economist. But uh, I think looking at current events and how things have played out and looking at history and, what, and when Bitcoin has performed well, I think... Political risk and currency risk are really the best two value drivers for Bitcoin. All right, let me take some, some questions here from the, the audience. Ian, I would like to know when you're about to come to London so that I can be ready for your event. I don't want to miss. That is after the coronavirus is gone. I mean, hey, I miss London, London too. London was a great city. London town, the crypto family there is so friendly. Um, so I definitely do plan to come back to London. Not sure exactly when, but I will keep you posted. Thank you very much, Ian, for teaching the world about cryptocurrency. Thank you. Thank you, Wealth Creation Education. Thanks for the comment and the love. 
Uh, Kiran on Twitter says, what is the crypto mutual fund that is available in the market? Crypto mutual fund? Unfortunately, I don't really know. Uh, I don't really know any crypto mutual funds. That's something you'd probably have to talk to you. Whatever, whether you're investing through a 401k or whatever platform you invest in. Uh, I do know there are some available. Uh, I know there's the great grayscale trust, but I think that that's probably for institutional investors. There are no ETFs at the moment. Uh, I know Coinbase had their Coinbase, Coinbase index, but they canceled that because it wasn't perf performing so well in the bear market. Okay. Hey, dog. Barker, good to see you here. This is much different time being at 0% rates and zero banking reserve requirements. I've been hedging with physical cash, having bankers around here whispering liquidity issues. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think hedging, hedge everything. I think in times like this, you definitely want to be hedging everything. I mean, even cash. Uh, don't have too much money in a bank account. If you do, so let's say, this is, this is probably more of an issue for rich people, but let's say you have a million dollars. Don't put it just in one bank account because here in America, the FDIC only insures up to 250K. So better to spread it out across, across four bank accounts, for instance. But even then, I think, assume that whatever bank you're with could go belly under, like what happened with Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers. So don't have all your wealth and just one company or one bank, stress test everything for the worst case scenario. So put your money across maybe multiple banks and maybe even have some money out, maybe like 10% or to 25% of your money in some other assets, whether it's just in a cash under, under the, the pillow, <laughs> right? Maybe it's the apocalypse or Armageddon and all the banks just collapse. collapse. Maybe the, the bank runs. And, because I did see some some posts going around, people saying some banks, I think Bank of America, I'm not sure how legit it was, but some banks are restricting people's withdrawals to just $3,000. So imagine there's a bank run and the, and the banks have, uh, as Doug is saying, liquidity crisis and issues. So have some cash in the house, maybe in, in a safe. Have some precious metals, gold, silver, I mean, I haven't really dabbled with them, but from doing my research in times like this, uh, I'm starting to look into it. That's why I've been looking more into Peter Schiff because he's kind of the, the, the gold guy. I mean, so yes, because even with crypto, I mean, all of us here are pro crypto, but we stress testing means going through everything and seeing where you're, you're vulnerable and seeing, okay, how do I plan against that? So like for me, right, I'm pretty much all in on crypto. But let's say I'm completely wrong and Bitcoin and crypto just crash during the global recession. So a hedge against crypto would be gold. So that's why I've been looking more into gold. I mean, I haven't bought any gold yet, but I mean, everything you have, hedge against banks, hedge against uh, inflation and currencies, the US dollar, the euro and other currencies, hedge against crypto and Bitcoin, hedge against real estate. So you want to have hedges on hedges on hedges so that if anything happens, you, you have a chance to bounce back. So, I mean, it's, we're definitely in tough times, but hopefully we get through it. So hope for the best, plan for the worst. Okay, Crypto World Tour is lit. Thank you, Alpha, Alpha Diallo. Okay, back to the, to the AMA. Hi, Ian. In 1971, Nixon took the U.S. off the gold standard. Do you think the U.S. government will put us back on the gold standard or BTC standard to protect the U.S. dollar value five to ten years from now, not tomorrow? Wow. Uh, good question. Good question. So I've also been thinking about this myself. And honestly, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so. I, I think... Before I kind of go into long term, I have to just look at it from a short term perspective. Right now, we're going into a global recession. There'll be Goldman Sachs predicts maybe even 20% unemployment 
millions of, Amer of Americans who, who have no jobs, but also around the entire globe. Supply chain, everything is going to be to be tested. And if not, we'll have to do a global reset with the entire economy. Now, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but there are people out there that are speculating that this is a way for governments to get rid of cash and force all everybody around the world to go digital. Um, I, I'm not really sure what I think about that because I don't really believe in speculation quite like that. But I think the only way we go back onto the gold standard in the U.S. is if the dollar crashes. Like if the dollar crashes and almost goes to zero. I mean, where there's super hyperinflation and there is no way to escape it until they go back to the gold standard. So, I mean, at that point, we won't really be in a recession. We'll be in a deep depression where it's like a super recession. So, I mean, obviously, I'm no economist, so it's not sure exactly how that would work. But I don't see the American government going back to the gold standard unless their backs are against the wall and they have no other option. I mean, because I've, I think if we're, if we're talking the next five or ten years, they'll keep on printing money until hyperinflation gets so bad and the dollar gets worthless. So, I mean, it is possible. I mean, I'm not sure from a probability perspective whether it's highly probable. But, I mean, worst case, let's say inflation gets so bad and it's hyperinflation. Yes, I mean, it would take a president, a leader, to, to have the cojones, to have the balls, to say, you know what? I know we've been off the gold standard since 1971. Let's go back to it. I mean, because... To do that, to go back onto the gold standard would, I mean, the amount of internal strength it requires to do that because the entire country either has to be on board or the, the leader, the president at, at that time will have to go against the entire country because it's really, I, I do think that would solve lots of issues. But So what does that mean, when going back on the gold standard? That means that the government can't just print money anymore. There'll be a finite supply restricted based on the supply of gold. So that means whenever we're going through the, these economic crisis, the crisis that we're going through, we can't just print money as a solution. That means we have to swallow the pill. We have to take our medicine. And I'm not sure the entire country wants to take the medicine. Like for instance, right now, right? Right now we're going through tough times Lots of people in the travel industry, in the restaurant and, and hotel industry uh, have lost their jobs. They're unemployed. Do you think a president like Trump or, or just, it could be any president in any country is going to say, you know what? Let's not give you a bailout. Let's not bail out any companies. Let's not bail out any people. Because right now, government uh, Trump is talking about sending Americans $1,000 in money to help them get through this tough time. Where's that money coming from? It's coming from quant quantitative easing, printing more money, money that we don't have. So if we're going back on the gold standard, we can't do that. The president would, ha would have to look the American people in the eye or whatever, whatever country you're in. Your president will have to look you in the eye and tell you, you know what? Yes, we're in a depression, we're in a recession. Things are horrible, but take your medicine, you know? It's going to be like this for the next five years. We'll, we'll, we'll just have to bounce back. So I don't think the American people can handle that. I mean, because here in America, people are talking about socialism with Bernie Sanders and the Dem Democrats and liberals. People want free health care. They want free college. I mean, so when people are fighting for free college and free health care, and you tell them, we're going back to the gold standard, that means they can't just, we, we, we can't do that because we don't have the money, the assets on the balance sheet to do that financially. So I think it's going to be tough. That's kind of, right? And if anything, the US dollar and what's possibly coming could in a way be the end of the, of, 
of the country of America. I mean, not to kind of get deep, but I mean, we all know every empire falls, right? I mean, the Roman Empire crumbled. One of the best, if not the best empire ever, right? They fell. And now we're really getting into a time where you have China and you have America really kind of colliding economically because China in the last 30, 40 years has become an economic juggernaut. And now they want to get out of, uh, they want to get away from being tied to the U.S. dollar. They want to, because they're tied of the regulations that come with that, right? Because the U.S. kind of dictates and creates the rules. So, I mean, times are tough. Times are tough. I mean, even Russia, for example, one of the biggest rivals of, of America, they've been waiting for moments like this. I mean, because Russia doesn't have too much debt or leverage compared to the U.S. They've been buying lots of gold. And now they're, they're in a price war. They're seeing that America is weak, so they know for them it costs a lot less money to produce oil. So they're cutting the price of oil and competing with, with Saudi Arabia, trying to bring the price down and get America out so that they can then eventually bring the price back up. I mean, so... Times are crazy. Times are crazy. So going back to your question, whether I think the U.S. will go back to the gold standard, I think that will only occur if it's the end of the end. Like when the the American government's back is against the wall. But I don't really think the American people can swallow that pill because right now people have been asking for more socialism, free healthcare, and, and lots of other free stuff, which requires printing more money. So telling the American people that, you know what, we're done printing money ever. We're only going to have the money that we have based on the supply of gold and the gold standard. That person will probably not get elected as president. I mean, because even looking at Republicans, at Trump, I mean, Republicans are known for being fiscal conservatives. And even in times like this, they're printing money. And, And they're planning to offer Americans money to help them get through tough times. So all this does all this goes against the gold standard. So, I mean, I think it would be great for America to go back to the gold standard, but I think it's, it's going to be very, 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 very tough. Okay, let me, let me just see how we're doing here. What do you guys think? Barry says, are you running any master nodes now or doing any staking? Uh, no staking. Only thing I have is just helium. So helium is basically all I have. Um, what's up, JMO? Good to have you here. Do you think crypto will be shut down? Um, I don't think so. Crypto might go through a prolonged crisis or bear market, but I don't think it's going to be ever shut down. Ian, I am also from Uganda. Hey, what's up, my Ugandan? Family, good to have you here. What is the opinion on BNB Binance? Can I still keep it? Um, Binance. Okay, let us let us take a look here. I mean, so right now I'm just showing just short term. So short term. Why? Sorry, why isn't it showing me Binance? Okay, let me. All right, let me just reset this. BNB, Binance. Binance is 17th. So right now, the TA is neutral on Binance, but not so good on Binance right now. I mean, the market in general is not so good. So if you go back to the earlier uh, analysis on the show, things are not looking so good at the moment, unfortunately. All right, uh, great question. Great question on, on the gold standard. Okay, next question. You and Superman used to be the popular YouTubers during the bear market, however. Your numbers have since dwindled. Why is that? Okay, fair question. Well, I mean, I was the the ICO guy. I mean, so ICOs fell out of favor uh, because, I mean, people... It was basically kind of that... uh, Is it called Prisoner of the Commons? Where everybody just overuses the grass. So a bunch of people, a bunch of opportunists took advantage 
of the ICO market and basically scammers, right? And it, it just got out of control. People were throwing money. It, it became a bubble that popped. The ICO bubble popped. And when I was an ICO guy, nobody wanted to do research on ICOs or invest in ICOs, right? So that was part of it. And then I would say in general, I mean, m- my brand was was a bull market brand. I mean, to the moon and beyond, 100x, right? So my brand was a bull market brand and crypto has been in a bear market. So, I mean, it also taught me as well that, hey, we have to figure out how to really be stable regardless of the market. So I, I think that's kind of why. Uh, and then I was also busy with the Crypto World Tour. We did 35 countries in 12 months. So that was also my priority. I mean, because unlike other YouTubers, YouTubing is not my main gig. Like YouTube is my side hustle, if anything. Right? So like I was a crypto investor first, right? Over being a YouTuber. Well, you have other other people that are professional YouTubers that that's all they do is just YouTube. Right? So people, I, I won't name any names, but you guys probably know them, right? They're doing videos every single day. But I mean, I'm running a company every single day. All right? Working like, Anywhere from, yeah, usually 60, 70 hours a week, sometimes even more. And then I come and do YouTube. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I work so much that I don't even plan my, my streams. I just come and just do it live, or I just do it like 15 minutes before. All right, so YouTube is not my main gig. So uh, right now, I have been putting a lot more time into it, and we've launched a new channel, Token Metrics. So that's, that's kind of where we're putting most of our content. But in 2018, we were traveling to a new country every two weeks on average. And, so, and doing live events while also finding companies to, to invest in and, and do re- research on. So doing all of that and then do YouTube videos, we didn't really have that much time. I mean, we did try doing the, the vlog, but that wasn't really well, well received in a, in a bear market. But I mean, I, I, now now we kind of think we have a better strategy going forward. But I think that's that's probably why numbers came down. Okay, uh, next question. Okay, uh, good question. <laughs> good question. Do you think the days of a thousand X are over? Okay. I mean, a thousand X. Yes and no. I think the quick a thousand X returns are over. So, I mean, for example, 2017, 2018, the Wabis, the Icon, the Dragon Chains, getting a hundred X investment or even more are over. I mean, even Ethereum. But I don't think they'll, they'll be over for good. They'll just be harder to get, harder to invest in. And then I think they'll also be longer, right? So as opposed to getting a thousand X or hundred X return in in four months or one year, it might take you four years to get. So, I mean, for instance, imagine Blockstack. Blockstack is one of the higher rated projects, Blockstack and Matic Network. Imagine if those hundred X. Right, and that, that is possible. Blockstack's market cap has been under 100 million. I think it's like 25 million. Imagine if that goes to 2.5 billion. Right, that's a that, that's a hundred x. So things like that are possible, but they're tougher to come by. So and it, something like that might take longer. It might take three years or longer to happen. So I, I don't think they're fully dead, but they are becoming more and more rare. Right, so uh, there's this famous saying: "What the wise man does in the beginning, the fool does in the end." So just to kind of delve deeper on that, what does that mean? Right. So like imagine, like the pe- people who are early, right? The wise man comes in, discovers something new, right? Like let's say, what let's say like we we discover how to do token metrics and we're investing in ICOs, and we're we're ma- we're printing money. Then the word gets out. Other people begin doing the same method, the same system. 
then after a while everybody's doing the same thing then at the end before the bubble pops any 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 random person who's not really doing much homework is not doing the same thing right uh, so that applies across all markets right so even looking at stocks for instance like if you hear somebody saying hey now is the time like imagine you hear somebody who has no business really being uh, uh giving out investment advice or tips like, like imagine if your barber tells you hey buy crypto buy bitcoin uh, maybe it's a good time to take some profit right or somebody who was super bearish on crypto or just stocks in general or let's say somebody's bearish on a particular investment right and then out of nowhere that now telling you to buy maybe it's this time to take some profits off the table because maybe the the music is almost over so i think that's kind of a, a strategy on that but i mean so going back to this do i think the days of a thousand x are over no they'll be harder to come by though they'll take longer as well so i so that's really it. Okay. What do you think of crypto.com and the MCO token? Well, I mean, I haven't really looked into it, so I can't really say much. Actually, let me, that's not what I want. Let me just take a look here. MCO. Okay, so tokenmetrics rank 63, market cap rank 58. Let me go to the TA. We were having some TA issues earlier. Yeah, I have to, I'm not sure why this is happening. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> My fault, guys. It was was showing long term notch. <laughs> That's why we had the TA issue. Okay, so I mean, short term TA is is good, right? Because okay, the TA is not switching though. Okay, I have to I have to talk to our developers about that. Okay, let me just write that down here, guys. Give me one second. Okay, all right, so back to this. All right, with Ethereum not having a max supply, isn't it looking like the Fed in the end printing infinite money? Oh man, I mean, great question, great question. Um, currently, no, but I mean, down the road, yes, that definitely could, could be an issue. Uh, cause I mean, yeah, they can just keep on printing and printing and printing. So hopefully they fi figure out a, a way to resolve that issue. Uh, but I mean, there are other, other ways to kind of hedge, right? Cause Ethereum has stable coins. So if you're not so bullish on Ethereum long term because of that, um, I mean, there's Dai, multi collateral Dai, and other stable coins being built. Now, I'd have to kind of delve deeper into all the their supply economics just to see exactly how that would work. Let me see if I can pull that up here. Supply schedule. Okay, just give me one second. Okay, so just found some some posts here. Okay, so here we see. So after a while, um, okay, so this is a post on the Ethereum forum. Okay, this was back from their ICO. 
So a constant amount of Ethereum will be mined forever. But what happens is over time, as more and more ETH is mined, or are mined, the constant amount mined becomes a smaller and smaller portion of the total amount of existing ETH. The percent mined of the total existing amount tends to 0% over time, asymptomatically, never actually reaching zero. Additionally, an equilibrium will eventually be reached when the rate of ETH lost due to bit rot, carelessness, deaths, etc. equals the rate of the new. So basically, it's saying eventually the emission schedule will get so low where it equals the amount of Ethereum being lost and unaccounted for. Um, okay, let me, let me see if I can find something that better explains it. Okay, this isn't really explaining much. Okay, I mean, uh, I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue, but obviously it could be. Uh, but it's, it's kind of hard to say at the moment. Okay, here we, we have a chart. So, I mean, the Fed, I think it's looking at the Fed, the Fed has been their emission schedule for the US dollar has been rising exponentially than before, right? Because in 2008, like before then, excuse me, the amount of money being printed wasn't that much. But now we're printing what we're printing like combined prior to then in, in like a, a day or, or in, in a few years. So the emission schedule for the US dollar is getting worse and worse, while Ethereum's emission schedule is getting less and less and less. So I don't think it's, we can really compare it uh, apples to apples to the, the Fed and what they're doing. Okay. Um, okay, can you... Can you tell why eternity has a good future in your in your view? Um, I mean, well, to do that, we'd have to go to the the score. Le looking at the long term, I mean, long term, Paresh, our developer, he looked at the code and he's he's very very optimistic on the code and the fundamentals are decent, but uh, obviously. The, the, the TA is not quite there, but probably better if you just go to Tokenetrics and read the entire technical report on it. Okay, going to the next question. Where in general should we go buy legit and verified gold? Uh, I'm not a gold expert, so I, I have no business really talking about where to buy because I haven't bought gold yet. But I'll definitely do my research. Um, I know lots of people. Actually, Costa on, on our team buys gold. So if anything, uh, I'll be talking to him about it. But because he, he, I think he was in gold before crypto. Uh, but for me, yeah, um, I would definitely gold and silver, right? So just as a hedge against crypto, because obviously we're all here in crypto, right? Someone was asking what the cap was. This is uh, let me pull this off here. This is the crypto money team. <laughs> let me. It just fits, right? So all in on crypto, crypto money team, baby. <laughs> anyway, I'll I'll put that out later. So yeah. Um, I know Peter Schiff sells gold on his site through some company, and he's, uh, I believe they're licensed, but I, I haven't really used it myself, so I can't really comment much. But I mean, definitely do your due diligence, find somebody trusted, maybe ask other people you know in your network where they bought gold, if any of them have bought gold, and definitely do the due diligence, right? Because you can buy gold in, in several ways. You can buy like, uh, the actual gold bars, or you can buy like gold coins, 
uh, speaking to Coaster, he was telling me that I think it's easier to buy the gold coins because it's, it's, it's easier to, to spend them. While the gold bars are more for like storing and the gold coins are like for using. Uh, then you also have like investing in gold type indexes or ETFs. Uh, those, while nice, aren't really, they're different from actually owning the gold because somebody else is, uh, has custody of the gold. So kind of like in crypto where not your keys, not your crypto. Well, if you don't have custody of it, it's technically not your gold because what if the company or the ETF that has custody goes bankrupt or something happens, right? So you also want to hedge against that. So definitely, definitely do your research. Uh, I'm just kind of delving into this. So I'm still brand new in, in, in the gold space, but uh, I'm just planning for the worst, hoping for, for the best, right? So, I mean, I hope crypto goes to the moon. I mean, I still have my moon shirt, right? The moon is not the limit, <laughs> but uh, you got to hedge against everything because uh, we've been through a bear market in crypto. We've seen what that was like. Now the entire world is going to go through the same thing. So it's kind of like we're the adults in the room. We know what to do. We want to hedge against everything. We want to be super paranoid because the people who are paranoid in times like this, they, they survive, right? I mean, even from uh, like look, looking at, at evolution, right? The reason why we get scared and we have the fight or flight response is because we've evolved to act that way in stressful situations. So, for instance, if a lion comes at you, right, the people that survived were the parent ones who are running before they even saw the lion, <laughs> right? <laughs> because they could just maybe feel, feel it in their bones or feel it in their, like, goosebumps, right? The goosebumps, your body began reacting to something and just kind of having that, that head start, right? But anyway, I mean, jokes aside... Being paranoid in times like this is good. Okay. All right. Next question. Looking back on the ICO craze of 2017, 2018, can you honestly say that most were scams that were just in the business to raise free Ethereum? Good question. Um, yeah, I mean, looking at, at the space and now knowing what we know now, I think there are lots of opportunists, right? I won't quite say outright scams, but there are lots of projects, if anything, that were legal scams. <laughs> I mean, they they saw a chance to raise money without giving away any equity. They saw a chance to to take money from people, put out a project, and say their work is done. No, thank you. So it was really the wild, wild west. And I think because people were, were making money initially, they let that happen. But once the, the swan song was over and once the music stopped playing and people were left holding bags, then people began to get upset. And that's when everything came crashing and the bubble popped. So I think it was definitely not a good time, right? Uh, because looking back at it, most projects are either dead or illiquid or both. And then regulation and compliance uh, with the SEC and other organizations made things even worse. But I think they had to step in because things were get, getting worse. They had to step in to protect investors because people were, were losing money. So, I mean, I think it was definitely a, a, a tough time. Interesting time. Um, looking back at it, I think everybody now has learned from it. The space is getting more mature. I uh, can't really say that those times will end because the market moves in cycles. You have bull markets and bear markets. And opportunists and speculators are always are always there, whether it's, uh, especially especially in a bull market. So, I mean, going back to the question, I mean, 
they were definitely looking the projects were definitely looking to to raise money from people without having to give equity and the space has gotten better as a result of it it was almost something that unfortunately we had to do because if we didn't go through those growing pains and learn from those bad projects things would have would stay like that and get worse right so it's kind of like with any industry, right? Before it's the wild, wild west. Then people lose money. I think bad things happen. And then people now want regulation and some compliance and some rules. And they want people to, to, to act like adults. Because the reason why raising money through crypto was so innovative was because anybody could participate and invest. And because anybody could start a project and get funding and build the next Ethereum. So once we had that big win, so going back to what I said earlier, what the wise man does in the beginning, the fool does in the end, right? So we could say the wise man was maybe Vitalik with Ethereum doing the, one of the first ICOs, one of the first, probably, yeah, I would say the first big ICO raising $18 million. And then you had other people now look at that. And then eventually we had fools raising money via ICOs as well. And that's when it was, it was the end game. So it's unfortunate that people had to go things, had to go through times and experiences like that. But I think at the end, we've all come out better. Uh, unfortunate that some people had to lose money. Okay, next question. Token metrics only has a PayPal payout method. How about getting paid out in BTC or USDT or RSR or something else? So he's talking, he or she is talking about the affiliate program. So yes. So unfortunately right now we only have the PayPal mass payout option available. Um, doing crypto might be tough. We would have to look into it. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's, it's going to be challenging to, to do it in Bitcoin and crypto because um, maybe stablecoin might be easier, but that's going to be a hassle in itself, just kind of getting that created and doing that mass pay for, for everybody. So right now, the PayPal option has, has been the best option. Uh, but I mean, stay tuned. Maybe things get easier through different vendors we have available. But, uh, but as of right now, uh, it's only the PayPal option. Can you please add two-factor authentication to Tokenmetrics website, please? Yes, so initially we launched with two-factor authentication, but then people were complaining <laughs> that they didn't need it because we weren't taking custody of anybody's money yet. So we took it off to avoid friction with people signing up and using the platform. And it was something we had planned to, to bring back once we had gone through the compliance and uh, applying and getting a license to become a registered investment advisor with the SEC, but maybe we, there's a way we can make it optional. We'll have to look into it. Uh, I would say for now, submit it on our feedback page and let's see if people want to bring it back. To do that, just go to feedback.tokenmetrics.com and we can have the community take a look at it. So to do that, just go to, this is the site. This is where we take all, all our customer and user feedback. Okay. Uh, have I looked into Next Nash again? Uh, no, I have not looked into it, but uh, we did last week. Actually, every, every single show somebody asks about Next Nash, and the score is pretty much the same. Uh, not bullish on it at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, if we go to short term, Nash is 87th. Now, the, the TA is showing bullish. Sure. Uh, so maybe, yeah, let me see if, let me take a look. Yeah, so the short-term TA is very bullish. Actually, yeah, let me just ping our developer about this. Okay. 
Just give me one second, everybody. Okay. All right. Back to this. How high do you see Hedera Hashgraph going on the long term? Okay, I mean, uh, H bar. Long term, I mean, uh, let me see. This one is not changing. It's, it's pretty much the same. Huh? Yeah, this one's been hard to predict, especially in. Uh, let's go to. Hold on. I mean, so the models have it going, being pretty stable, but uh, it's not been that accurate, though. I mean, but just looking at it from, it's decent. It's, it's all right. But I mean, it's it's undervalued short term, but uh, neutral on the TA, slightly undervalued uh, on the long term as well. But they are better projects out there. Okay. What are your? Th okay, I feel like I've kind of answered this question, but maybe I'll try to answer it in a different way. What are your thoughts on the financial system in general, long term? I mean, so I'm, I'm guessing, or rather I'm assuming you mean the global financial system. I think it's, it's going to blow up. I mean, I think with the US dollar, or rather the American government and the feds printing more money with quantitative easing, and the amount of leverage and debt we have on the books, on the balance sheets, we're going to go through inflation. Inflation is going to go through the roof. And now with coronavirus, we're going through a, re a recession. So a recession and inflation gives us stagflation. And we have a lot more debt than before, than prior to 2008, because Americans, the Fed keeps on printing more and more money. So things are looking very, very bad. And it's not just happening in the U.S., but now the entire world, the entire global economy is going to go through, go through, through the same thing. So, I mean, this is really going to be huge. This could be one of the, probably the most memorable years in, the, in this decade. Even though it's the first year in, 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 the, in the decade, I mean, this is going to go down in history, kind of like how 2008 went down in history, how 9-11 went down in history. So, I mean, looking at markets, I mean, so looking at the Fed and the, and the American government, they're printing money to try to stimulate the economy. So they cut interest rates, brought them down to almost zero because they want people to go out there and spend. So they're giving money to the banks and the repo market, what have you. And they want people, they want them to, to they want to have basically trickle down economics, but it's not really going to work. I mean, that's why the markets keep on hitting circuit breakers because they see the balance sheet and they see that this is not going to work anymore. That's why the sentiment is so bad. So, I mean, it's it's tough, tough times we're in. I think. 
we're really, like I said before, I think this could be the beginning of the end for the U.S. dollar or the U.S. economy. Because uh, if we go to, through a recession or even a depression, what happens next? I mean, how do people recover? Because people are asking for more and more socialism, more and more money, right? They want free health care, free, free everything, right? Free health care, free college. All this requires money and printing more money to pay for it. Either you print money or you, you tax people. And people don't want either. People definitely don't want to be taxed. So the government prints money. So, I mean, if they say, okay, you know what? We'll stop printing money. Uh, somebody earlier asked, maybe they'll go back to the gold standard. Maybe they do that, but probably unlikely. Or they stop printing money and raise taxes. And nobody wants that. I mean, I don't want that either. <laughs> I mean, so they're stuck between a rock and a hard place, as the saying goes. So the only thing really to do is to stop printing money, go through this crash, you know, swallow, swallow the bitter medicine. But I don't think the American people or just other people in other countries as well want to go through that because nobody, want, nobody wants to sacrifice the short term. Nobody, nobody wants to go through pain in the short term for a gain in the long term. Like it's just human psychology. People want immediate gratification. So that's why they keep on kicking the can down the road. But now they've kicked the can down the road so long that the can is, is stuck. You can't kick it, the can down the road anymore. So the economy is not looking good. I mean, not, not to sound paranoid, but I'm just keeping it 1,000% 1, 1, with you guys. I mean, things can get, things are probably going to get worse before they get better. I mean, we shared earlier in, earlier in the show that, I mean, everywhere, I mean, all, all the analysts are saying a recession is coming. They're predicting probably maybe even 20% unemployment. And that means one out of five people with no job. So, and at, while we're going through inflation, while things are getting more expensive because of the money getting worthless and the purchase, purchasing power declining, so the economy is not looking good, man. The economy is not looking good. I don't really know what else to say. I mean, I'm kind of speechless as well. I mean, obviously, I'm no economist, so I'll definitely leave all the details to them to deal with. But, I mean, if crypto is supposed to save us from this, man, it better save us. Otherwise, we are all... We're all wrecked. I mean, crypto was designed for times like this. It was designed for uh, being a hedge versus currency risk and designed to be a hedge versus political risk. So in 2020, crypto better shine. If it does not shine, if it crashes like everything else, I mean, crypto might go through, crypto might never recover. Right, or it may just fizzle out, and people would say, "Oh, this was Bitcoin ne ne was never going to work. Bitcoin never saved us." I mean, yes, Bitcoin has survived lots of deaths before, but if the U.S. dollar crashes and Bitcoin does not pump, man, I mean, talk about apocalypse. <laughs> I mean, but uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully we end this and we all do well, but. I was talking about earlier, you have to stress test everything in your life. Everything. I mean, what I've been doing personally is going through and cutting all the nice-to-haves that, that I don't really need. Like maybe it's a subscription to something. Right? If I don't really need it, I cut it. So being frugal, cutting, minimizing all the expenses, trying to have runway and just have money that can last and plan for the worst. Plan Imagine if there's a bank run and your money in the bank is not accessible. Or plan, imagine if whatever country you're in, whether America, Europe, Asia, Africa, Middle East, whatever country you're in, whatever bank that has your money, what if they tax you? What if they, they do what, they, what happened in Cyprus? They reach in your bank account, take out half. So you want to hedge against all kinds of risks. 
So even crypto, I don't have all your assets in crypto because if crypto doesn't do what it's supposed to do, you might be wrecked. So that's why we're even talking about gold on the show, you know, precious metals, gold, silver for, for the first time. So, I mean, long story short, don't have all your money in one bank account because even the bank can go under, right? Imagine if, like, what if, uh, let's say Chase, Bank of America, JP Morgan, what if they go bankrupt, uh, right? So have money, if you have money in bank accounts, have it in multiple accounts spread out in different brands. I mean, in different companies, don't have it all in one company. So maybe you have money in Bank of America, Chase, uh, Wac uh, Wachovia, some other, some community bank even, right? And the, oh, maybe you even have some money in an offshore bank outside of your country. Maybe you have money in a Hong Kong bank that's not tied to the US dollar. Maybe it's tied to Hong Kong dollars or some other thing, right? So that, that's, that's, that's five banks right there. And maybe you also have some money in crypto, right? A away from the economy and all the fiat currencies as a hedge to that. And maybe you also have some money in precious metals like gold and silver, as a hedge versus fiat currencies and crypto. Maybe you have some money in real estate as well. So you want to do, I mean, you want to diversify in almost like 10 different streams or, or, or well, not streams, but 10 different places. Maybe you even have money in your house in a, in a, in a safe uh, cash in case banks shut down and don't allow you to withdraw money. Maybe they say you can, you can only withdraw $3,000 a day and you have like half a million. What's going to happen then? Right? So you want to plan for the worst across all the board, test, stress test everything, and see, okay, if something bad happens, can I manage? And if you can manage, how long can you manage? Can you manage for a month, three months, six months, 12 months, 18 months? I mean, so hope for the best, but plan for the worst. Okay, I mean, uh, do I sound crazy right now, guys? <laughs> Let me check the comments. What are your thoughts on investing in equity since the market drop? Um, it depends. I mean, investing in equity right now, you would have to be a long-term investor with a time frame of over three years, I, I would think three year or longer time frame, and you've done research on what you're investing and you're buying the dip and you know things can go lower and you're willing to stomach that. Okay. Um, let me see here. Is the government going to use USDC to pay? I don't think the government is going to use a stable coin. Uh, maybe the central banks start issuing their own stable coins. But, I mean, because they have been talking about that a lot. So that is a possibility. MozTube says, all logical correlations are breaking down. Gold and Bitcoin should have been rising. After a while, gold and Bitcoin would likely begin to moon. Yeah, so I think gold and Bitcoin have to decouple and stop being correlated with, with capital markets. And I think that's going to happen once inflation kicks in. And once we're in the recession, crypto is falling alongside the market, says Clay. Uh, Clay says, Republicans, boy, I tell you. <laughs> I mean, at this point, even Republicans are known as being fiscally conservative. They're also printing money. Then Iron Man ICO says, is there any news from the SEC commissioner on the safe harboring of new project, crypto projects? If this were to happen, what effect do you think it would have on the ICO, IEO market? So, I mean, there isn't any update. There, aren't, there are no updates right now. That was just an initial proposal. But if that happens, I mean, if they green light, to the moon and beyond. I mean, to the moon and beyond. If, if the SEC comes out with a framework for ICOs and IEOs, it's going to be a bull run all over again. But, I mean, that could be, that could be a while. That could be a while. Okay, uh, next question. So taking questions all the way from, from Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook as well. Which is better, USDT, DAI, USDC, to sit and wait? 
uh, I mean, our team prefers Dai. Dai is the best stablecoin we've researched. Uh, they did go through the issue with Maker, Maker DAO, but Tether has the most liquidity available. So, I mean, okay. So, so in terms of stablecoins, I I would prefer Dai because Dai is the premier stablecoin when it comes to DeFi, decentralized finance. So if you're trying to say, okay, you know what? We're going in this recession. I don't want to lose money. I, I, want, I want to find a way to make money. So maybe you start, you, maybe you, you take a portion of your funds out of crypto, whether Ethereum, Bitcoin, put it into a stablecoin like DAI, and you lend it out at maybe 7 or 10% interest, right? So there are lots of different platforms. In the past, recently we had on, uh, the CEO, Alex of Celsius Network. So for instance, they have stablecoin lending. So let me see, let me try to pull up their lending rates. So Celsius, uh, out of all the different plat platforms we've looked into, like Nexo and others, in terms of the centralized lending platforms, uh, in my opinion, this is, this, this is probably the, the better one. So maybe you start lending your money. So maybe you take multi-collateral die or even they do have other stable coins right true usd gemini dollar tether usd so imagine you're getting 9.9 percent .9 on stable coins over the, the span of one year if the market is going down 40 percent that that is a win i mean that's a win pat yourself on the back you didn't take that l Right? Actually, let me see if I have a soundboard for that. Shut up and take my money. Shut up and take my money. I mean, so stablecoin lending in times like this is vital, crucial, crucial. Right? Um, I have some dye. Uh, not much though. Just, just somebody paid me a dye during for for lunch. But I mean, I would say anything on, on platforms like this, whatever it works. I mean, stablecoin lending, I think, is definitely a good hedge in a portfolio going into a recession. I'm not saying put all your money in this table coin, but hey, maybe you have all your money on the sidelines because we're now going through inflation. If, well, not yet officially, but with all the money being printed, inflation is gonna get a lot worse. So having your money just in a bank account is not good. So lending, platforms like this, or even DeFi lending. So platforms like Compound, let me let me pull up compound here. Compound platforms allow you to to also do lending, right? So the compound protocol. They have let me let me see what they have here. Okay, um they don't have their lending rates. Okay, anyway. I would look into, let's go to DeFi Pulse. So being able to lend your money, yeah, Compound should, not sure why I didn't, I guess I was on the wrong site. But being able to lend your money through DeFi and have custody in times like this is also good. However, everything has a risk, all right? One thing I learned from taking the investment advisor exam is everything has a risk. There is no free lunch. So even when it's non-custodial, the risk is the smart contract can get hacked or there could be glitches. We've seen what happened with flash loans and BZX. You saw what happened with MakerDAO where somebody got $4 million worth of Ethereum for, for free because, I mean, it, there was a Black Swan event that nobody was prepared for and this person took advantage so I guess in, in times like that, maybe there are free lunches. <laughs> but uh, in general, though, there typically are no free lunches. So, yeah, I mean, even with lending, I mean, I would definitely hedge and, and stress test and have different ways you're lending. Maybe you lend on Celsius and DeFi. So in case one of them ends up having an issue. And then with DeFi, having insurance, right? There's decentralized insurance through Nexus Mutual. Uh, I haven't used it, but I have been hearing about it. Let me let me see if I can pull it up here. 
because I know they did pay out people. Uh, I read this on the news. So Nexus Mutual, a people-powered alternative to insurance, get covered against smart contract failure. So definitely worth checking out and doing research on. I'm not sure what other options are available, but this one was getting some some press attention recently with the, I think it was the flash loan hack. So let's see here, their blockchain capital, Kinetic Capital and one confirmation are participants. But yeah, I mean, you want to you want to hedge against everything. Anything that has your money, have a backup plan that that could crash. So don't put all your money in that. I mean, this goes back to ICO investing. I mean, most people that lost money are the people that put 50% of the money into one ICO. As opposed to, I mean, when it comes to trading, for example, there's a 2% rule, but it says don't put more than 2% into any trade. So, I mean, have that perspective. My rule when I was doing ICOs was not to put more than 10% into any ICO. But, uh, I mean, obviously, as, th as things got riskier, probably should have changed that to like 5% or less. But maybe the rule is don't put more than 5% into anything, right? Maybe don't put more than 5% of your wealth into crypto, Bitcoin, or a particular asset. Maybe maybe put like 5% in gold, 5% in real estate, 5% in lending. I mean, just plan that, plan to have lots of, it's kind of like having a table and you want to have lots of stools or lots of legs so that if one of the legs gets taken out, you can survive to live another day. All right, let's go back to the AMA. I would love to know more info on Maker and why it's so important in the, in the DeFi ecosystem. So, good question. So, if we go to DeFiPulse.com, this is a website that tracks, it's kind of like CoinMarketCap for DeFi. So, right now, we have over half a billion dollars locked in DeFi. Now, this has crashed with, with the entire market because before we were over a billion, went to 1.2 billion, but now it's gone down by a lot, right? Gone down more than 50%. But regardless, the maker dominance is still 50%. Is 50 so maker has the most money. That's why maker, now that's the first point why maker is very important when it comes to DeFi. And then maker, the second point I would say is MakerDAO was the first DeFi project, right? MakerDAO has the maker cryptocurrency, which is a governance token. And then you also have DAI, which is a stable coin that's pegged to the US dollar. So one DAI gives you one US dollar. And the two are basically by the same project. So they were the first, um, might even say the first DAP on Ethereum. It might have been the first DAP. Uh, don't quote me on that. But they're definitely the first DeFi project on Ethereum. And everybody else kind of came after. So they're important because they were the first DeFi project and they have over half of the assets in the, in, the, in the Ethereum DeFi ecosystem are in Maker. And our team has looked into it and we definitely think they're the good projects. So looking at, uh, so for instance, let me, let me pull up. Uh, okay, so let's look into Maker. So short term is number seventh in token metrics rank, short term. Uh, TA is neutral at the moment. Long term is 11th, right? Fundamentals and technology are good. Uh, for details, just go on our platform and read the reports. But I mean, Maker is definitely something to keep an eye on. Uh, DAI, DAI is, is also decent technology-wise. Uh, TA is, is bullish on DAI, so it's saying stable coins are good right now. Uh, obviously, not the combined long term, not really the best hold, but short term, it's 
it's 21th in rank. So it's basically saying short term, probably a good idea to have some, some stablecoin or die. But I mean, overall though, Maker and Die, the way they go, is really the way the DeFi ecosystem goes because over half of the assets in the space are in Maker and Die. Okay. Okay. Uh. Will a bull run in the crypto space be harder now that a black swan has happened? Oh, man. I would say short term, yes. It's going to be tougher short term for a bull run. Um, long term, no. Long term, I mean, it's very, very bullish, very optimistic. So... Let me kind of break that down. Short term, meaning that the next few months, global recession. Time is going to get tough. Uh, not sure whether things are, whether it's going to be a quick bounce back or whether, whether it's going to be prolonged time for all the different countries affected by this black swan event of the coronavirus to, to bounce back. Now, people are talking about the Bitcoin halving and how that is, because it's basically supply and demand. The Bitcoin uh, inflation rate is going to be cut in half so that the amounts of bitcoins being mined will be less so if there's more demand for bitcoin and the supply is getting lower and lower the economics tell us that should be good long term short term it might take a while to to really be felt but long term i think it's good for the crypto space now i mean going to your question in terms of the bull run i mean with inflation and a recession, the inflation, yes. If you told me, hey, it's just, it's just inflation, hyperinflation across different countries, countries around the world, dollars is getting more and more devalued, the purchasing power for the dollar is getting less and less, that bodes well for Bitcoin and crypto. And that should really tell us that it's going to be a bull run. The issue, though, is the recession, the global recession. Because... In times like this, people are getting out of risky assets. Nobody wants to speculate on something that's going up 40, something that goes up or down 40% in one day when they're about to lose their home, when they can't pay their mortgage, they can't pay their rent, when 20% of the population is possibly unemployed, which is what uh, analysts are predicting. That, 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 that is possible if the government doesn't intervene and bail the people out here in the in, in America. So the recession is really the main concern. But, but I don't think the bull market is going to happen. I talked about this early in the show. Until we have inflation and until we have political risk, right? So currency risk and political risk are really the two things to watch out for. Currency risk is going to happen with inflation and printing more money through quantit quantitative easing. The current, the political risk, though, I think you have to really have governments around the world start. I mean, even here in the U.S., people. I mean, all the conspiracy theorists have been talking about martial law. I mean, not to really uh, agree with them per se, but if governments say, you know what, we're out of money, let's take money from our people, from the banks whatever, right? All those Illuminati people <laughs> saying that uh, the Fed and the, the Bilderbergs or whatever are going to take money from people. I mean, let's say once in a blue moon, maybe they're partially right or they're right, right? Uh, but I mean, because Bitcoin did really well in Cyprus back in during the last recession when Cyprus took, went to people's bank accounts and took their money saying that... Uh, we have to be altruistic and bail out the country. So imagine if the U.S. increased taxes, or, right? If they levied taxes to 50%, or if they said, you know what? We're going to tax the entire country automatically by going to everybody's bank account and getting 20% of whatever money you have. If something like that happens in the U.S. or in other countries, 
in Europe, Asia, South America, Africa. I mean, crypto bull market. Uh, but obviously, it would depend on how big the country is. If it's America, oh yeah, definitely a bull market. Uh, I would say if it's a developed country with a large economy, and if lots of countries start doing things like that, that's the political risk. I think that would definitely, I mean, people would, would flee that local currency to to crypto and Bitcoin. So I think, in my, in my opinion, those two things have to happen. I don't think we're going to have a long-term bull market or bull run with only one. I think the two have to happen. I mean, and now that I'm kind of thinking about what I'm saying, I mean, I'm not trying to sound crazy, but it's almost like for those two things to happen, all those conspiracy theorists and those crazy people have to be right. I mean, all, the, all those tinfoil people wearing, wearing those tinfoil hats saying the government is going to confiscate your money, all right? I mean, the, the inflation thing, I think we all kind of agree with. But the political risk is more of government confiscating people's money or automatically taxing them. I think it's kind of like a, it's a one-two punch. Because inflation, yes, it will be positive for crypto and, and Bitcoin. But I think it's that second punch that really takes it to the moon. But I mean, that's just my opinion. Uh, like I said, I'm all in on crypto, but in times like this, you have to hedge against everything. That's why I'm exploring other options as well. Precious metals, gold, silver. I mean, I haven't bought anything yet, but I'm doing my research because now is a good time to diversify. Hey, what's up, Sergeant Crypto? What are your thoughts on the free money to everyone? So I kind of talked about it earlier. So, I mean, my thoughts on the, the U.S. government giving out free money to everyone, short term, it's good, but it's just a band-aid on the problem. And I don't think the American people are willing to swallow the medicine, to swallow the better medicine and not kick the can down the road by putting a band-aid on the problem, but taking the pain up front for the next couple of years, could be two years or even five years to not have the same issue long term. Because the issue is we keep printing money and the money keeps getting devalued. It keeps getting worth less and less. And we have so much debt on the balance sheet. So giving out more money? I mean, how do you give out more money when you have so much debt? It means you have to print even more money, getting even more in debt. I mean, the best way to put it is imagine you, you're broke, right? Imagine that you're, you're an individual, you're broke, you have no money, and then you offer to give money to somebody. <laughs> like, un unless you're, you're a magician and you can print your own money or counterfeit or whatever. I mean, that's, that's just a bad, that's just not common sense. But that's what the government is doing. It's broke, it's in debt, has no money, but because they're the government, they can print their own money. So while the American people want free money to get out of tough times, I mean, I, I do understand. I mean, if we're going to have possibly 20% unemployment, I mean, I definitely do see where people are coming from, right? If, if, if you're unemployed right now, you don't care about the government's debt. You, you're telling the government, hey, print more money. Print money like you never put money before. Right, so um, from that perspective, I do understand where an American person who's going through a tough time. Maybe you worked in the in, a, in the airline industry. Maybe you worked in a restaurant or bar, and you don't know how you're gonna make money for the next few months or get by. And maybe, but I mean, most places in America, I think I'm not sure if every, every everywhere has done this, but most places, there's like here in Maryland where I'm based, the governor of Maryland has said that. Nobody can require anybody to pay rent or a mortgage right now. And they can't charge you any late fees or any interest for not paying because we're going through a crisis right now. So at least when it comes to a place to live, oh, and also no landlord can evict somebody right now. So 
if you have no money because of work or whatever, you should at least have a place to live. But maybe somebody else, some, some of the people had other issues. So the main thing is really having money for groceries and food. But I mean, in terms of, in terms of really getting through that, it's tough. I don't think, honestly speaking, I don't think the American people want to do the, the right decision because, I mean, they're going through tough times. People think about themselves rather than thinking about the collective as a whole. So, because the, real, the, the right solution should be not to print more money. But when people are going through tough times and they see Trump is offering money, I mean, nobody's going to say no. They're going to say, yeah, print that money. Give us $1,000 a month for everybody in our house so we can do whatever we need to do to survive. So it's really kind of everybody's thinking about themselves surviving rather than the collective surviving, which ironically is almost kind of the, the selfish thing to do as opposed to altruism, even though the government or the Fed is thinking, altru is thinking like an altruist. But anyway, that's kind of my take on it. I mean, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, about the gold standard, uh, we, we covered that early in the show, so maybe kind of rewind for that. But I mean, I don't think it's possible. I think it would, would be a good thing to do, but I don't think the American people are going to elect somebody who's going back to the gold standard because that means they can't print money. That means they have to just deal with, with, with the issues we have at hand. And right now, people have half of the country wants free college and and a bunch of free other stuff. So if you tell them that they can't pay for it by printing money, it's going to be that person might not get elected president. All right. I have a hunch that the STL space will be very bullish up to the end of the next bull run for crypto. What do you think about it? Okay, so you think the STO space will be bullish for crypto after the next bull run? I mean, I would say first, we got to get to this bull run first. <laughs> I mean, because cause this bull run was a pump fake. It was pump fake, then, then coronavirus hit us, right? Coronavirus came in and blocked that. <laughs> right? For anybody who watches basketball, that was a basketball an analogy. But uh, yeah, first, we got to get through this, the first bull market in a while. because. We had just seen some sh some sunshine, right? Some sunlight came through. We thought we were clear. We thought it was clear sailing. We we're gonna get to the promised land. Then the entire world is just going through this crisis, and now we're everybody else is going through a recession. So that's gonna delay the the bull market for crypto, I believe, short term at least. Long term, it's gonna happen. I mean, I think. So when it comes to STOs and security tokens, we have to wait and see if in the next few years what the SEC does, at least here in America, because the SEC commissioner, Hester Pierce, has been talking about creating a framework for cryptocurrencies, a safe harbor, for three years. So if they end up launching or approving something like that in the next year or two, you won't really need security tokens or STOs. Because most projects building will just be able to go through the safe harbor rule. Security tokens will just be left for real securities. So assets trading like on, on, the, on the stock exchange and real estate and other things like that will be able to be bought and sold. So, I mean, I think STO is going to take a while. Longer than we even anticipated. Because we thought it was one or two years away but it might be even longer. I mean, long term, I think, I mean, looking at different reports, so like the World Economic Forum, they predict that in 2027, 10% of the world's assets will be tokenized. And that a large amount of that will be securities. So I think long term, yes, uh, securities and STOs, maybe even IPOs in the future will be it done on the blockchain via tokens, or maybe a portion of them will be done on the blockchain via tokens. So I think that is also possible. 
But I think overall, though, STLs, it's going to be a long time. Well, not a long, yeah. Long time meaning, I think, longer than two years. Because the way it seems, it seems the SEC wants to create a framework for utility tokens, for projects to go that route, as opposed to having to do it the traditional way with securities. All right. Uh, question here from Mindblocker. How will we pay the bigger debt back? Um, I mean, good question. I mean, probably a better question for for an economist, somebody who's done economy, right? Economist. Um, I mean, the first step would be not to print money. And the first, the second step would be for America or any other country, whatever country is in debt, to, I think, to start producing their own goods, the the trade deficit. Yeah, I mean, because I'm trying to see if my economics is right. The trade deficit is also an issue. So because if a country is purely consuming and they aren't, they aren't really producing, that becomes an issue as well. Uh, just, uh, let me just go through that again. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like paying paying a debt for anything, whether it's a car loan, a mortgage, or just any bill. I mean, one month at a time, you know, slowly over time, it gets fully paid off. So, I mean, America as a country would have to first stop spending, stop printing money, and then rebalance the trade deficit and start making money. Right? Making money by producing uh, materials here and selling them because really they've been importing materials in and not really, right? So import and exports. So I think that would have to be balanced out. If not, it's kind of like a seesaw. So we've been consuming a lot more. So we'd have to consume a lot less and produce a lot more. I think that that's how that would work. But uh, I'm not a, economy is not my thing. So talk to the experts. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see here. Have I heard of Silo Stablecoin? Uh, yes, I have heard of Silo. Not sure. I think that was through Binance or something like that. Were there investors in that, James? I'm not sure. All right, let's go back to the AMA. <laughs> yeah, so the, the HAD says uh, crypto money team. Let me just go through the questions here and see how many we have left. Okay. All right. What realistic BTC price are you all in? Um, I mean, so we covered this earlier in the show. Token metrics is not so bullish at the moment. Uh, if you go to our platform, like if you go to the platform, short term, not so bullish at the moment. Uh, if anything, neutral. So it's kind of a wait and see. Um, so, I mean, the market is not so good right now. So that does make sense. Do you think BTC is priced in for the halving? What do you think price is going to bottom post halving? Thanks. Now, this is a question we've answered before, but I'll answer this again. Yes and no. Uh, so, I mean, not to hedge myself, but yes, short term it's priced in, long term it's not priced in. Uh, short, because long term, rather, 
the fundamentals have changed, right? The economics have changed. Supply and demand has changed because supply is going down and we anticipate demand is going to go up. So as a result, we think long-term that it's going to go up. However, short-term, we'll be going through a global recession. So, I mean, nobody really wants to invest or touch a risky asset in a, in a crisis when they can barely pay their, their bills, their rent, their mortgage, if we possibly have 20% unemployment. So I don't think Bitcoin, short-term, is going to perform so well. I mean, the model is kind of backed that up, at least for the next 30 days or so, is kind of neutral or, or bearish. However, we think once inflation starts taking off and increasing, uh, and with, we think, so basically currency risk, and if there's any form of political risk, if governments start confiscating people's money, then those two, that one-two punch combination, uh, in my opinion, can really escalate and be the catalyst for Bitcoin and crypto to pump. So I think those two kind of have to happen hand in hand, maybe maybe in, in different orders or in the same order. But I, I think that's really what's going to take for crypto to, to go up. I don't think just halving during a global recession is going to cause people to want to buy Bitcoin. <laughs> if anything, it tells you, no, no way. But I think halving in a global recession can be overcome if people become paranoid that whatever country they're in, their government is taking their money or is thinking about taking their money, that political risk. And if they see inflation, that their purchasing power is decreasing and decreasing, and it takes them a lot more money than before to rent a house, buy a house, buy a car, buy a loan, uh, buy groceries. If their purchasing power is declining, kind of like what happened in Venezuela and in Argentina, those two, that combination, will overcome the recession that we're in. Right? People will say, you know what? Yes, times are tough, but buying, buying, a, buying lunch cost me five bucks a year ago, and maybe in inflation it's now cost six bucks or seven bucks. Or buying groceries, maybe, maybe somebody could feed their family on, let's say, 100 bucks a week, and now it takes $120 a week. Maybe they slowly see that things are getting more expensive. That's what happens when you lose pur purchasing power. So people, kind of like what happened in, in Argentina, they start finding other ways to not lose their wealth. So Bitcoin and crypto will, will be a safe haven for that. And it will also be a safe haven when the government, kind of like in Cyprus and other places, thinks about taking people's money from their bank account and tries to confiscate it. Or maybe they're thinking about taxing people. So I think those two things in tandem will overcome people's, uh, people's not, yeah, people who are not inclined to invest in risky assets because then it's not really a risky asset. It becomes a saving grace. Bitcoin and crypto becomes a saving grace when those two things happen. So right now, crypto is correlated because it's not a saving grace. But once those two things happen, people will be singing for Bitcoin. I mean, so they'll, they'll be singing. Shut up and take my money. Shut up and take my money. Right? So... Until, the, until those two things happen, I don't think that's really, I don't think Bitcoin is going to take off. So going back to your question, is, is the halving priced in? Yes, it's priced in. But once those two things happen, like I talked about, to the moon and beyond. But obviously, it is a black swan event with the coronavirus. Uh, no, nobody has really planned for any of this happening. Big, this is the first time Bitcoin is going through times like this as well. So, I mean, I could be wrong. We, we could be wrong. Let's see what happens. But always hedge. Always have a backup plan. So if Bitcoin or crypto doesn't perform like we expect with, with those two things, it's good to have other backups. Maybe it's gold or silver or some other asset. 
right? So I always have a backup plan because, I mean, we're going through tough times. Hope for the best, but plan for the worst. Okay, James says, I don't know, but they are comparing to Libra and some of the companies that were with Libra are not with them, are, are now with them. Okay, uh, or, or for Silo. Okay, I'll have to look into that. Did I talk about Hex? Uh, no, uh, we have the Hex review on, on token metrics, but I mean, let me see if, if this is up here. I mean, we're not so bullish on Hex, right? It's outside the top 100 in rank. So not so bullish on it. Uh, I I do know it has been actually faring pretty well on Uniswap in terms of volume, the the DEX. So that, that is pretty interesting. All right. On to the next question. Okay, what is Cosmos? Is it competing with Ethereum? Give me an example of real life. Um, it's not quite a competing with Ethereum. Cosmos is building an internet of blockchains. It connects other blockchains. Actually, in a way, it kind of is competing with Ethereum because as opposed to building on Ethereum, you could build on Cosmos and talk to multiple chains. But I, the best way to, to think of it is it connects other blockchains. So it's kind of competing with Polkadot, with Icon, one chain, and all those other projects that were trying to do the same thing, Aeon. But Cosmos is the better out of all those, at least to, based on our team's research. Um, real life example. I mean, besides being the... I think the internet of blockchains is, is the best example. It's kind of like having multiple blockchains that all connect to one blockchain. So as opposed to having to build on Ethereum, on, on, so pick multiple blockchains. We've got Ethereum. We have, let's say, Metahash. Let's say Bitcoin. Let's say, so pick five blockchains. Having, as opposed to having to code in different languages for each blockchain, with Cosmos, you can build on Cosmos and talk to all of them at the same time. Now, let me see if I can pull up the, the chains Cosmos supports. Let me see if I can pull it up here. All right, so this is their website. And so it says join the most scalable ecosystem of connected blockchains. Yeah, connected blockchains. They connect. Um, but let me see the chains. Oops. Um, okay, I'm not sure why this is. Um, maybe let's let's check out the ecosystem. Okay, so these are their projects currently on on Cosmos. So Binance Chain is on Cosmos. We have Akasha. Loom Network is also integrating into Cosmos. Kava, IrisNet, Terra, which is a stablecoin. I also know uh, Enigma is is in the process of building on uh, onto Cosmos. Um, okay, let me, let me go back here. Okay, so Cosmos is supposed to be the Let me do this article here. Okay, let me just pull up what we have here. So if we go to the technical report that we have on Cosmos. Let 
Yeah, I'd have to ask Puresh. Um, I don't know if there's a list of all the supported blockchains that they have. But anyway, I mean, long story short, they, they're supposed to support multiple chains. So, I mean, we know Binance Chain, um, Ethereum. Okay, let me, let's go back to the AMA. Okay, how many questions do we have left here? Okay, um, what do you think about Amisego? Amisego, so if we go to Amisego. Okay, I mean, short term is 15th on the rank. Token metrics rank so short term as a short term trade, uh, it's, it's it's decent. Long term is twenty two, so it's technically it's undervalued based on its market cap. Uh, but not not the the best project out there, but it is still undervalued at the moment. Okay, next question. Thoughts on Perlin, exit scam. <laughs> uh, okay, so before I talk about my comments in Perlin. Let me pull it up here. Okay. This one, we, we didn't finish scoring. Um, we, we do have a video on it though. That was, that was done by our team, Paresh and Sam. I mean, so TA, it's, it's very, very bearish. <laughs> um, now I haven't followed it too much, but I do know people were talking about it not being a good project or possibly having done an exit scam. I would have to look further into that. But I mean, right now, uh, definitely not a good idea to, to be touching that. Uh, I, I don't know, quite frankly, don't know exactly what's been going on. Uh, I, I didn't invest, uh, but I know people were complaining about, I think is the team shutting down or are they doing some kind of change? Let me see if I can quickly pull this up. Maybe it's somewhere in the news. Okay, so you see there's an article here. Okay, so they postponed their mainnet launch indefinitely. Ooh, indefinitely. Seems they're getting hurt by the coronavirus. I mean, yeah, that is tough. Yeah, because they were supposed to launch their mainnet a while back. Okay, I mean, other than that, I, I don't really have much to say on it, unfortunately. Okay. Do you think the coronavirus is bioengineered? If so, who do you think is behind it? What do you think about the corona coin? Okay. Um... I'll start with the Corona coin. First of all, I don't think it's it's a good idea. Uh, maybe somebody did it for fun and giggles and stuff, but I mean, people people are actually dying, so probably not the best idea to do. And it's probably it probably won't be around after the coronavirus is done anyway. Um, okay, but on the other question, do I think it's bioengineered? I mean, that is kind of a conspiracy theory. I mean, quite frankly, I mean, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I like to look at things from a from a probability perspective. So, because because nobody will ever know, like unless you have a smoking gun, nobody will ever know. So, why even speculate on something that's unprovable until you have actual hard evidence? So, because of that, I think probability wise, I don't think it was bioengineered. That's not saying it wasn't. I'm just saying prob it's probable. It's, it's more probable that it wasn't than it was, right? So whether that's 70 or 30%, who knows? But if I was a betting man, I would say it's there's a bigger probability that it wasn't than it was. But hey, I mean, maybe it was, who knows, right? Uh, but if it was, right, let's kind of go down that rabbit hole. If it was bioengineered, why would they put it in China? 
because I mean anybody who's done biology and just knows viruses and they they go viral. I mean that's where the, that word comes from. Because let's say you are trying, let's say it's some state based actor, right? The CIA or some other country's secret service agency or whatever, trying to hurt China or some other or Iran. If that was the case, they would have known that by putting it there and exposing it to the public, it would go viral across the globe and eventually come back and hurt your own people. Right? So like let's say like let's for a second entertain the conspiracy theorists that it was CIA or whatever, right? Why would they do that? Because now it's in our backyard here in America. So to me, that doesn't really make much sense because why put it in your, in your rivals, right? I think if anything, what makes more sense to me is maybe some research lab was testing it. Maybe it was like a bio, bioengineered um, virus that was in the lab and maybe some, somebody messed up and didn't clean themselves or, or wash something off in the lab and it escaped the lab and it just went loose and went and is now spreading across the world. So I'm more likely to believe in something like that than in some like some secret service or, or an intelligence agency trying to hurt some other country, right? I think, I, I know some people were talking about there's a virus uh, research lab in Wuhan that was uh, investigating infectious diseases and viruses. Uh, I know some people were talking about that. I mean, but I, I think, if anything, most more likely than not, it hopped from bats or pangolin, as they're saying, and jumped to humans because... I mean, people were were eating bats. I mean, that's wild. So I was I was joking on on Twitter and and via our email. I mean, not on on Instagram and via our email that we've heard of the butterfly effect, but we may have to change that to the bat effect. I mean, literally, one one guy or girl eating a bat has put the entire world uh, on its heels. The entire world is now. I mean, stock markets are crashing because somebody ate a bat. I mean, that's, that is pretty wild. That is pretty wild. Uh, not even sure if I have a... You really think someone would do that? Just go on the internet and tell lies? But anyway, who knows, right? I mean, it is the internet. Uh, people can can lie. Uh, who knows? Uh, even authorities are, are known for not being transparent. But if anything, they're just looking at probability-wise. I would say... First, first option, number one, probably jumped from animals to humans, evolved. Second option, probably escaped out of a lab by accident. Maybe somebody messed up, whether it was China or some other country, somebody messed up. Maybe somebody was just stupid and didn't follow proper protocol, right? I would believe those two over some other government trying to start a world war. But what do you guys think? I mean, let me know in the comments below. What theories do you guys have? Okay, all right. If you guys are liking the stream, definitely hit the like button. Thumbs up, subscribe, share with your friends, turn on notifications. Okay, uh, let me take a look here. How we're doing. And hey, what's up, CC? Thank you, I appreciate it. James says, pretty sure the U.S. will be gold-backed when they capture asteroids or planet Latin with gold. <laughs> when they capture... Yeah, I mean, because gold does come from outer space. <laughs> Google the Quantstamp node box. Okay, speaking of smart contract hacks, have you seen Quantstamp's device to run nodes? and get paid in QSP tokens. Uh, no, I'm not looking into that, but uh, thanks for sharing that. Okay, all right, let's go on to the next question. What do you think about Tika Tawari's final five coins? Uh, honestly, 
Um, I, I have heard about this. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I've even seen the official list. Uh, let me just see here. Because I, I know people were talking about the list of the coins and he had this big promotion of it. And he, he was on the London Reel talking about it. Right? It's called Five Coins to Five Million. <laughs> okay, I mean, I'm not even sure. Does anybody have the five coins? I mean, because I did hear about it, but I'm trying to see if I can find the actual list of coins because I'm not sure which coin is actually real and which, which one is, and people are just speculating. Right, because I'm seeing here he's talking about Neo, Chainlink. Okay, just give me one minute here. Let me see if I can find, I think some some group was talking about this. Let me see if they have the actual list of, of the five coins. But the list I looked at, I mean, those were not five coins to five million. No, I'm sorry. I mean, the, those were... Let me take a look here. Okay, so the list I'm looking at here um, says Engine Coin, ENG, Numerai, NMR, Crypto, MCO, Status Network Token, SMT, and Datacoin, DATA. Okay, I mean, if this is a case, I mean, this is, where's, where's my... You know the deal, please don't take the L. Don't take that L. Don't take, don't take that L. Okay, I mean, that is... That's an L in my opinion. I mean, because... I'm not even sure why status is on there or data coin. Crypto.com, I mean, it is kind of popular and it's a good domain name, but nah. Numerai, not really. Engine, Engine has a Samsung deal. But I mean, we have our five coins to five million on tokenmetrics.com every day based on our analysis, fundamentals, technology. So, I mean, if you want the real five coins to five million, <laughs> Uh, here we go. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Matic, Blackstack, Binance. Boom. I mean, long term, those are the best. If you want to stretch it and go t 10 coins to 10 million, Zcash, Cosmos, Cardano, Neo, Dash. Okay. I mean, that's our list. And we think, I mean, we have more faith in that and our, our own list than the list he made. Because some of those coins, I mean, let me see if I can pull them up here. Not even sure they're in our system. But I mean, I did look at them as ICOs. Numerai? Yeah, Numerai we don't have yet. Data? I mean, some of those are just, they're not even in top 200 market cap or anything like that. Uh, engine we do have here, but we're not so bullish on it long term. Although it has been getting a bunch of press and all that stuff with Samsung and other companies. But for us, not really. I mean, but this these are our five coins to five million. Obviously, I'm just kind of playing by talking about because that's what the title of his coins are. I mean, but this is not financial advice. This, these are just our opinions, our research. Uh, things are very, very risky when it comes to investing in crypto. So always do your own research. Only invest what you're willing to lose. Uh, Never invest more than, I would say, 5 or 10% into any particular coin. So, I mean, the strategy we we think is optimum is to have a balanced portfolio of 10 cryptocurrencies or more. So I mentioned 10 cryptocurrencies. So, for instance, maybe take those 10 and put maybe at most equally weighted portfolio, 10% into each, and then rebalance your portfolio at a particular interval, maybe every month, every quarter, every year, but something like that we think is going to outperform because the two coins in there we mentioned, Matic and Blockstack, their market cap, so here, right, their market cap right here, right, versus the token metrics rank and index, these two have a good arbitrage, good chance for growth. Matic Network's market cap is 28 million. 30, both of them are under 30 million. Blackstack is the blockchain. The first reg A-plus backed blockchain at 30 million. 
imagine three years down the road, right? When you're thinking about this, you have to have a long-term perspective. This is not some quick flip, pump and dump, right? Long-term means technically you have minimum one year, but ideally three years or longer to wait for a return. Meaning you're not investing your rent money, your house money, your mortgage money. You're only investing money that you, won't, you don't need for the next three years. If you're not willing to do that, don't even sign up for this. I mean, don't sign up for those two bonus projects because you'll get shaken out by right? the first red day, the first time the blood in the streets as opposed to buying more maybe to reduce your dollar cost, to, to reduce your cost basis. You'll, you'll run for the hills. You'll sell everything. And then when it pumps, you'll be like, man, that was me. <laughs> so if you're not in this for the long haul, I would say three years of minimum, only invest money you, you don't have to, to look at or use, right? So that's the perspective, I think. You could just think about it. If Blockstack goes from 30 million market cap to $3 billion market cap, that is a 100x return. And that is a 100x. 100x, right? So then Matic could possibly do the same thing. Then we also have a hedge because we you don't want to have a portfolio purely with just alts like he has because what if you're wrong? So that's why having Bitcoin and Ethereum in there makes sense. And BNB. BNB has been crushing it and we think it's going to continue crushing it. But if we're going, going, going to the top 10, we have we have Zcash. So going, looking at market cap, Bitcoin is 10. Seven market cap, Ethereum is thirteen billion market cap, Binance one point seven billion market cap, Zcash two hundred eighty six million market cap, Cosmos three seventy million market cap, Cardano seven hundred million market cap, Neo four hundred million market cap, Dash six hundred million market cap. So we basically have some some decent projects, kind of more of the the blue chip, and we have some alts in there to keep things nice and spicy, but we don't have just some random alts. We have the best of the of the best alts. We have the creme de la creme, right? Matic Network. I mean, we, we, we met that team in India during our crypto world tour. They won a crypto pitch competition. Uh, Coinbase ended up investing. And people are speculating that because Coinbase are investors, they're gonna go into coinbase.com. Now, and we do think that's possible. Uh, my sources tell me that Coinbase requires liquidity and volume. So right now, the volume on market uh, on Matic Network is about 15 million, and the market cap is 30 million. So uh, I think the the consensus, or rather, the people are saying that when it goes over 100 million in market cap, it's more likely to go into Coinbase. However, some projects have gone on there with a lot less, and like I know, Loom Loom's volume on there is now like nothing. So that could also be why. But I think those two projects are projects that are likely to go into Coinbase and those other big exchanges. I mean, they're, bo they're both on Binance. So we think, in our opinion, these coins will perform a lot better, right? But as usual, this, this is just our opinion, just our research. Uh, always do your own research. Investing in cryptocurrencies is risky. But let me know what you guys think. Who do you think has a better list, all right? Tika or us? And be honest. All right. Um, we're going to have to wrap things up with that. It's been, a, a wow, uh, over three hours. Three hour live stream. Uh, and now I have a meeting. <laughs> I have a meeting with somebody who wants to join our affiliate program. So he's, he's, he's a big affiliate marketer. So we're going to have to dip out for that. But I mean, hey, it's been real. It's been a pleasure. And once again, we have launched the forum. So if you have any questions that we were not able to answer today, just go to, let me refresh it here. Go to forum.tokenmetrics.com and sign up and then post, post your questions. Now, this is... A brand new forum we just lost it so we're still trying things out so if something breaks or whatever please bear with us and we'll always give us your feedback and your input so any questions you have that were not answered so any questions you have here because i see we have lots of unanswered questions 
So maybe everybody can just take those same questions and ask them on the forum and we can get the entire community as a whole to participate and answer those questions. And our team as well will try to chime in as well. But once again, everything is just purely our opinions. No, nobody, even the people in the community will be giving actual financial investment advice. So please bear that and keep that in mind. And as usual, practice good risk management in crypto, especially in times like this, because things are getting very, very dicey. So with that being said, we just landed, landed on, on the moon, moon in a Lambo. Lambo. All right, all right. So it's been a pleasure. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody. Definitely make sure you subscribe to the Token Metrics YouTube channel if you haven't yet already. Just go to youtube.com slash token metrics. We'll be doing a live stream coming up with some great, great people. We have Roger Ver coming up on the 100X show. Uh, he, he just verbally confirmed, just working on, on the times. And then Bobby Lee as well, is uh, working with him to schedule his, his famous, in the, he's, a, he's an OG in the crypto space. If you know, know anybody else who's big in the crypto space that you want to bring on the show, uh, have them reach out to us. We're always open to having other people come on and do live stream AMAs. So it seems the community prefers doing it live stream. So we'll try to do most of them live stream if possible, assuming the, the person coming on has no connection issues. And yeah, so as, as mentioned before, 40% commission on the affiliate program for 12 months. So if, you, if you've been looking to make some extra income, maybe your job says you have to be quarantined, can make money, and you want to make money online, join the affiliate program. We already had somebody refer somebody, and they'll be getting 800 bucks cash, cold cash, fiat. <laughs> maybe they put it in, into stable coins. Uh, but yeah, I mean, thank you, everybody. It was a pleasure. Until next time, the moon, actually, the moon is not the limit to the moon and beyond. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you on the moon.